my wifey, bless her soul, decided that it would be a great night to put Netflix on upstairs so my little guy could watch Thomas the Train before bed. Well, you know the streaming for Netflix is absolutely horrendous. Not a good idea to be putting that on during the show. So I think that's what the problem was. You know, I really do. Spreaker, though, is causing some issues, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to get this thing going nonetheless. And you know what? If you want to call in, one seven zero two three zero two four five five six 302 is the call-in number. Right now, all the way from Australia, we have Ozzy Rob. He's always in our chat rooms. He's always spreading the show. He's quite intuitive as well. So you said June 8th, right before right before we went to break, Rob. Where the hell do you come up mm-hmm. with that date? Well, with a lot more advertising plugs and a few tweaks here and there, I'm thinking we can really push it and get the show out there. And this goes to all the radio listeners out there on all those networks. Um, if you'd all just mention it to a friend, mention the show to a friend, have them listen to it for at least a week, get their opinion, and then it'll spread from there. Mm-hmm. We can, we can do this. We can do this. We're like I for one would really love for you to, to make it really, really deep. I just want to get off Spreaker, man. I want to get into a good studio. That's what I want to get into. Yeah. I want to mm-hmm. get into it. I want to get into a good studio where we have a good signal, where the signal is going through a hard wire. Ian, you know what I'm talking about. You worked years in radio. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, We're you know, good. we Get had we had a huge studio that mm-hmm. that could fit eight people around, eight mics, so we could have eight guests on at the same time. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And yeah. a full DJ system. Yeah, that's Twin beautiful. turntables, everything. Yeah. I like pushing buttons. I don't mind the digital screen of the Spreaker studio, but you, you know the old radio boards, man, where you actually had the dials that you had to move up and down with your fingers and the, the old pots on the wall? That's what I miss. I miss that. That's where, yeah, I, where I started at WPA in New York, uh, NTR yes. Radio. Yeah, Rob. Yes, Rob. we know. We know what we know. What happens when you start fiddling? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. We know what happens when you start fiddling with stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. But, 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 but you see, the beautiful part of having an actual studio board is once yeah, you once you be. set it, it's mm. good, and you're not you're yeah. not worried about an internet signal on whether or not it's going to <laughs> it's going to decide whether or not it wants to uh, take it. You know what? I honestly believe. Like last night, we had a major major power outage here. Right before the show, yeah. we were able to get the show on last night, and we were we mm-hmm. were able to uh, to make things happen last night, which was pretty cool. And mm-hmm. and then the power went out again sometime in the middle of the night again. And but <sighs> like looking at the weather outside again, I mean it's ugly outside right now. So between the wife yeah, playing Netflix and mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know. The, the power surges that are happening outside, I'm not sure why it's going on. Eric at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you hear music in the background because I'm playing Bumblefoot in the background. I'm a Bumblefoot fan. I like Mr. B. Well, so, I just heard from the computer in the in the lounge room the the, bah, bah, the overtime thing. So really? um, I think it might have just reset. Well, I think it. I think it's come back now. So make sure you guys reset if you're cool. having troubles. I don't know what the hell is with Spreaker tonight. I really don't. I really don't. It's weird. It's the absolute. Gremlins have come out. Yeah, but why this show, man? Carl, I'm blaming Carl. You know what the hell? Let's just bl- blame Carl. Let's just blame Carl. Yeah. It, it's so much easier. Carl, to bl- you. You know, <laughs> I. I think you finally pissed off the men in black and they're coming to get you. 
Oh no, no. You know, this is my this is my example of the Canadian men in black. Hello, sir. We're sorry to bother you at this time, but uh, you know, we really apologize. But would you really? I I just don't know how to say this, but we, we we'd really like it if you don't talk about the aliens so much, because you know, I'm sorry to bring up this topic, but. In reality, you know, you're upsetting some people, and we don't like to see Canadians get upset. You know, I know we're a multicultural com- country, and we accept everyone in here. Just look at our prime minister. He, he doesn't care if you're carrying a, a bomb around your waist or not. He'll let you in. But we're, we're, we're just not ready for aliens yet. They're illegal. So if you What if we don't talk about the aliens? What do we talk about, eh? I know. I know. <laughs> Leave the aliens alone. <laughs> Leave the aliens alone. That's... <laughs> Take your hands off the aliens. Exactly. Hold on. A little bit of bumblefoot on. <laughs> this is guitar suck. Just listen to those fingers. It's amazing what he can do. Oh, man. I, I, I'm so excited to eventually get him on the show because I want to hear his paranormal experiences. He He's so into the paranormal, you know? That is so cool. Yeah, he's so into the paranormal. I remember when I, I was I was so scared to ask him. It's weird because normally I've dealt with enough, enough famous people in my radio days and Rob in the chat room, Rob Minhas in the, in the chat room on Spreaker, he can admit this because his brother owns the best bar in Vancouver called The Moose. And it was rock and roll. Like it didn't matter what night you were in there. I'm going to tell you a good moose story here. All right, Eric Cooper's coming into the show now. Hi, hi, Coop. Hey. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to tell the story here. So Rob Minhas, his brother Ashy, who literally, you know, I hire him in the summertime to be my garden gnome in order to keep, you know, the deer out of my yard. But they have the best bar in Vancouver called the moose it used to be called the loose moose they've cut the loose part out it's called the moose and literally it is rock and roll from the time you're going like it is straight 80s rock there is no none of this garbage out there no dance music no country no nothing it's guns and roses iron maiden Def leopard judas priest it's a rock and roll bar and it's fantastic so before I met my wife, I was on plenty of fish and I was, you know, trying to hoor my way around, you know, because I was in a woman hating phase. So I meet up with this girl online and she goes, me and my friend are going to this club. Want you to meet us there. Not a problem. I saw her picture. She looked great. So I brought my buddy Pete. Okay. And Pete and I literally walk by these girls at this club three times when finally she says, um, we're right here. And oh my God, they look nothing like the photo. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. So now, now we got to be courteous. Okay. Now we got to be courteous. So we go in, we meet them for a drink. And about 20 minutes in, 20 minutes in, one of the girls says, we're looking for any way to escape. You know, you know, it's like... It's like, oh, I'm not even going to use the, the answer that I'm going to use here. But we're looking for any way to escape. And one of the gr- one this dude walks by us, and the girl says, Man, I hate the smell of pot on people. So all of a sudden, I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. And so Pete's like, yeah, I got to go too. So we pull the girl thing. We, we go to the bathroom together. Okay, Pete, this is our plan. She hates pot. Let's go outside. Let's say we're going to go outside and smoke a joint, and then we're going to get out of there. And neither Peter nor I smoke pot, but we're looking for an excuse here to get out. So anyways, Pete and I walk back, and we're there for about another five minutes, and literally I say, hey, Pete, didn't you have a joint that you wanted to go light up outside? Yeah, man, let's go smoke a dube. All right, girls, we'll be right back. We're just going to step outside for a few minutes. So we literally exit the bar as quickly as we can. We run down Granville Street in Vancouver, hang a right on Nelson, go hide in the loose moose. Right? <laughs> so Ian, the bartender, Ian, the bartender says, guys, Dave, Pete, what's going on? 
oh, Ian, you don't want to know. And he's like, oh, no. So we tell him this entire story. The next thing that happens is Ian moves four shots of tequila over to us. He goes, boys, you need these worse than I do right now. They're on the house. Right? So Pete and I start shooting our tequila. And around the second, we're about to get started on the second tequila. And there's nobody in the bar that night. It's still quite early. And all of a sudden, the door, this, we see this giant limousine pull up. And this door opens. And if you're a Canadian Football League fan, and I realize most of our audience is in the U.S., but the CFL is a great brand of football. It really is. And the BC Lions had just won the Grey Cup a couple of days previous to that. So who comes out of the limousine like 14 BC Lions and they've, and they've got the Grey Cup with them, okay? And as a sport, and Pete and I are both sports reporters, okay? So here comes the Grey Cup, 14 giant men, you know, carrying the trophy. And one of the quarterbacks, a guy named Buck Pierce, says, Hey, Dave, what's going on, man? Oh, not much, man. He goes, What are you guys doing tonight? I tell him the story. He throws his arm around me. He goes, Boys, your night's about to get a hell of a lot better. So we party we, we, we party at the moose. We then all hop into the limousine where literally I have this the, one of the offensive linemen, a guy named Jason Jimenez, was six foot seven and three hundred thirty five pounds. okay? Giant of a man. He literally, as he sees me walking into the limousine, I'm like, hey, Jay. And he's like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, good. And as he's saying, hey, man, he's handing me a 60-pounder of Jose Cuervo tequila. He goes, looks like you need to catch up. Oh, my God. I got home at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay. I got home at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was in that limousine until like 4 or 5. And, you know, it, it, so it turned out from the absolute worst date or potential date ever. Willie, thank you so much in the chat room for saying happy birthday. I appreciate that. It turned in from the worst date ever uh, to one of the best nights I ever had, partying with the BC Lions in the Grey Cup that night. So that's my story. That's my story. That's a great story. Yeah. It is. It's one of those radio ones. Hey, Coop, how's the beard? The beard is doing great. Happy birthday, Dave. Happy Thank birthday, you. Ian. Thank you. Thank you, Coop. Yeah, Coop, Coop's one of the good guys. Coop's one of the good guys. I'll actually be speaking at his Forest Moon Paracon coming up here in September. And I had the pleasure, he surprised me last year, Ian, an audience, he surprised me last year with uh, inviting me down to speak at his conference, which was the first one I ever spoke at. But not only was I, it was the first one that I had ever spoken at, but he, he had me close. And you always want to be the closer, you know what I'm saying? You always want to be close to the top or on the top when it comes to the Paracon because that's when your biggest audience is. And, you know, Coop, you made my weekend that weekend, man, by doing that. Thank you. Good, good. Yeah. And you did a hell of a job closing, too. Thank you. I appreciate Dave gives good speech. He yeah. does. He does indeed. All right, I got to tell you guys something, okay? Maybe the chat room is frozen. I don't know. I don't know. Spreaker's just causing all sorts of problems right now. <laughs> yeah, but, it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is about it, but the chat rooms have all of a sudden seemed to go quiet. Is anybody in there? Maybe it's just my computer that's stuck. I don't know. What's well, going I on. I tried to log in and wouldn't let me. Really? It kept saying. Uh, it kept saying. Uh, you know, because um, I'm always on. I'm always on tra the space uh, radio traveler on Facebook. But today I wanted to sign up for the chat room on the space Air radio and whatever whatever password i put in it kept coming back up you need three to 15 characters really? and i was at three characters 10 well, that's, characters that's wrong that's wrong anyways where, where and, then what, and then and then every time you press you press enter right to put it and the, the thing would come you need three to 15 characters the okay button would come on uh -huh. And then the audio would shut off. And then I have to press OK, get back to the 
website and then hit reset. I know it, it's it's <laughs> terrible. It's terrible. Hey, we got a we, we, we got a Carl. we got a caller here. Area code four eight four. Who's this speaking with us tonight? This is Christoph. Happy birthday, Dave. Hey, Christoph, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, much. It's first time I heard you uh, uh, in person. Right, right it's on. awesome to meet you formally for the first time uh, on chat. Well, we appreciate that, Good Chris. Day, Christoph. Thank you. Now, Chris is one of our loyal listeners who does a hell of a job in in sharing the show and and being all around to uh, you know help us out. And you know what, Chris, I appreciate that, man. I I really do appreciate what you do. Thank you. You're very very welcome. I. You're one of the best buddies I ever had. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, how's your night going, Chris? This, I fell asleep early so I could attend the show without falling off. I've had real rough nights lately. Uh huh. Right on. Right on. Are you getting better, though? Yeah, I am. Because I know your health is a little bit of a concern. Yeah, it has been. It, it, but uh, if this heat doesn't help, but the past couple of days have been better than weather, so I've been enjoying yeah. it. Right. Now, you have cerebral palsy. Is that what you have? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I, I want you to know, buddy, I want you to know that I am so appreciative that you are with us every night on this show, man, and you're in the chat rooms and you're chatting away and making friends and and everything like that. That means a lot, okay? Yeah, your show has been pretty much my world lately. Thank you. <laughs> I love all the people in chat. Exactly, and the, and you know what? The one thing about our chat rooms is the one thing I like about them is we got some very respectful people in our chat rooms. You know, and they and they look out for one another. So I, I'm glad that uh, you know that you you feel like it's a safe place in there. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir, and I appreciate what you do for us too. Not a problem, bud. Not a problem whatsoever. And I'm gonna let you go though, okay, bud? Right, I hope you have a good e- evening and have a great I, time. I, I will. I will. You take care. Thanks. Take it easy, Chris. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Love that guy. Love him. You know, I mean, there's a guy who, you know, through all the health problems that he has on a daily basis, he still makes time to listen to us on a, on a every single night, every single night, whether he is feeling good or feeling, you know, ill, he's there in the chat room because it's one place where he's able to feel safe. And that's, that's what I absolutely love about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm just really touched for you. I mean, you know, it's this is what we why we do what we do. You know, that we make people feel good, entertain them, be their friend. You know, in a way, it, it's it's a really special thing when you hear that. You know, yeah. you should be very proud. Well, absolutely, and and we love them. We absolutely, we absolutely love them to uh, to bits here. So. Uh, let's see here. We got another caller coming in here. Let's take that one. Let's see where this is going. Area code 402. Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Sharon. Sharon. Cher. Sharp. Cher. Yes. Cher. Hi. Sharp. Hi. How are you? Hi. Well, I called to sing you happy birthday. Oh, I want to hear it. Come on. Let it loose. Okay. All right. I got to get ready. All, All right. right. Make sure you stretch. Picture, picture, picture Marilyn Monroe. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh. All right. So oh. here I am. Hold on. Here it comes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Davey. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. And many more. All right. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. That Can was wonderful. Can you believe I, I mean, I have to love you to embarrass the hell out of myself Oh, like don't that. be embarrassed. Oh that was God. wonderful. That was wonderful. <laughs> hey, hey, you that know, was incredible. <laughs> Sharon, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now? 
Th- that's what? The, that's what? the fir- that's the first happy birthday song I got today. Oh, you're kidding! No, no. Oh, everybody in the chat room is going to have to sing. Absolutely. Everybody starts singing. Uh huh. Did you get a candle? Did you get a cupcake or a cake or anything? I did. I did. My wife was out of town. And she, oh, okay. she she came home today, and uh, I and I got home. I had an ice cream cake, and she bought me a couple of awesome gifts today. She got me a, a re- really nice bottle of cologne because I think she thinks I stink, but I I love oh, the cologne it. that she bought. No. But but I have an affinity for hot sauce, and she, oh yeah, and she bought me this hot sauce. She went on this rack in this one in this one store near Vancouver. They got this giant wall full of hot sauces, and she looked, yeah yeah. And she got me one that was one point two zero five million Scoville units hot. Oh now, my god! So if you think of That's Frank, too funny. So if you think of Frank's Red Hot Sauce, Frank's Red Hot Sauce is like forty thousand right. Sco, Scoville units. This is one point two okay. million. I know she loves me just oh, because man. just because of the hot yeah. sauce she got me. Yeah. Oh, and that's I, too and, funny. And, well, and she's I, honey. The hidden the hidden meaning there is that you're hot stuff. Okay. Oh yeah. She knows you're hot stuff, and that's what she was telling you. I hope so. But did you make a wish? Did you I, make a wish and blow out the candle? I, I didn't even have candles. I literally got home from work. Oh no! I I pigged out on oh. dinner. I had hot wings with with uh, Ukrainian sausages, kobasa that my parents brought up for me, and she made these really Yum. really cool cauliflower uh, potato chips. They were really cool. And so, really, yeah. I've heard of those. Yeah, it. it uh, those are healthy. Those are supposed to be really good. Yeah, and they she, make cauliflower uh, into like mashed potatoes now too. You yeah. know, instead of mashed potatoes, you can substitute cauliflower. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, do you have a match? Do you have a match anywhere that you can light it and make well, a wish? No, but you know what? Blow you know, it out. You know what? Uh, you know what's really cool? My mother-in-law got me now. It's really weird. I don't even think she she knows who Guns N' Roses is, and I'm a big GNR fan. Yeah. Okay. She got I know. she got me yeah. this butane lighter that is shaped like slashes. Oh. That is shaped like slashes. You could be mine, guitar. The red one that he uses. Oh, cool. So I'm yeah, like, I'm like playing with it right now, well, and Bubblefoot's playing in the okay, background. Okay, there you go. And Bubblefoot's playing in the background, and I'm like jamming, and I got my real guitars right behind me. So it might get. Yeah, I might, I might start. Well, to you might have to play for us tonight. Okay. Oh I mean, no, it's I'm birthday. Terrible. You haven't played terrible. in a long time. I know. And I know you know at least three chords. So you get your guitar, but first you got to light your lighter, make a wish, blow it out, and I'm really happy for you. I'm sorry you didn't get any bacon though. I wanted oh, you to have that, bacon today. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. You can have I your will. birthday all week. I, I will. All week. I will. Thanks, Sharon, for calling in. All right. I love you. Love you, too. Bye-bye. That's Sharon. She's always in the chat room every single night. Appreciate her. 1-702-302-4556. 1-702-302-4556 is the call-in number. I know we're having some speaker troubles tonight. I don't know what the hell is with their studio. I really don't. But we're we're trying to get through here, nonetheless, and hopefully it's not too bad for you, and you're actually getting to hear some of the show. If you want to hear it clearly, maybe head over to Revolution Radio Studio B side, and we can get it on there as well. If you want to steal the audio from there, maybe Joe Roop at KTLK. That's what you're going to have to do, my friend. That's what you're going to have to do, you know. But we're we're rolling on through. Ozzy Rob. Yeah, June eighth. How 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 sure are you of June eighth? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a pointy stick at you from Joe if on <laughs> if on June eighth there, there's no offer. I'm pretty confident that it will be happening at least then. Really? Who's getting involved with us? Where are we going? Are we gonna get picked up by a giant network, or is it just gonna be another live radio station? Let's see. That's a Thursday night, Dave. June 8th. What's June 8th? 
That it's is a true. Thursday night. Yeah. I know, but we're talking about when the show is going to get picked up. I know. I know. It's going to happen on a Thursday night. Is that someone listening, or we're actually going to have contract talks start? I'm seeing three of the terrestrial networks. Okay, so we're adding a terrestrial. Wanting you to join us. Cool. Cool. The Lord knows old David and could do this full time. Definitely. I, I could. I, I think I would be good at it. I really do. Well, we all think you well, could. Then we got, would you? Then we got to get that spaced out radio jet. I know. I'm going to be like Cleflo Dollar. You know, the, the the preacher on TV who, I'm going to say, uh-huh. the SOR listeners need to donate $65 million so that way I can yeah, get... Come on, uh, SOR listeners. So that, way, can be. <laughs> so that way I can get a new jet to fly around the world to preach the the word of Spaced Out Radio. This or, is no, and so we can see the ice wall. we got to see the ice wall I, and prove the Earth is not flat. Exactly. I want to see make that ice wall. Yeah. So you, you're going to go around like a Shaolin monk and like and 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 wander the earth like in uh, David Carradine and preach <laughs> as the space out radio. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if old Cleflo will will lend us the the uh, the plane that his parishioners bought him because you well, know six, you million. know. You know, God only travels in first class because he doesn't want to be uh-huh. near. He doesn't want to be near the minions. Uh-huh. You, you know, who was the one televangelist who actually said that he needed a plane because there was so much sin and demons coming out of the air of people on regular flights that he shouldn't travel in pub on public airplanes. Who was that? It's probably Gary Baldwin. Well, he um, yeah. I think it was Benny Hinn or something. You think that's his name? Oh, I mean, hmm. let's face it that uh, that's a dick move. Let's be honest. It that is. is a that is a dick move. Can can we agree on that? Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh huh. Well, Everybody- you know, you know, they they are saying that. Um, all the rock stars and everyone that passed away recently, they're not, they actually didn't pass away. It's, it's the beginning of the rapture. It could and, be. I, and if that's, if that's true, I'm wondering why they're taking the rock stars. I mean, have they always said like rock and roll is the devil's music? Be- <laughs> I don't get it. Yet, yet, you know, Hey, I got to tell you guys, I just got added. Uh, and you might know this guy on Twitter. And, and I and I always look I always look at the blue check marks. I, I always want to see who the blue check mark. The producer of Sharknado, David Michael Latt, just added me on Twitter. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. Do you know him, Ian? Do you know him? I know of him because uh, the director of Unhinged, Mark Atkins, did a shark <laughs> movie for Sci Fi Channel uh, called uh, Planet of the Sharks. And the sequel, Empire of the Sharks, is coming up soon. So I, they, they're part of the shark uh, family on Sci-Fi Channel. I want to know how the hell this show, Sharknado, <laughs> made millions and has like had four repeats. How do you get that out of that show? Like, how? Let me tell you, I, I, I would watch it at Dr. Dre's house with my godkids, his, his son and his daughter, and uh, his girlfriend's. All, all their kids, and I had the best time ever. They were laughing and laughing and laughing. I, I don't think I ever laughed so hard in my life watching Shark Data. Uh huh. That's terrible. I mean, the kids went nuts. You know, I, I'm going to be honest. I haven't seen one, and if David Michael Ladd is this, listening, I, I'm, I'm not trying to insult your show, man, because I and <laughs> Ziri, I mean, Ian Holt, can I call you Ian? No. <laughs> Like, like, is you there? You know, I went through is it, with school with that. I was Ann, Ian, you know, Yan. I mean, nobody could pronounce my name. <laughs> you, you, you know what's funny though is, I wonder if he was Ian until he hit Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero. I bet you he was an Ian until all of a sudden he went all Hollywood. 
Well, no, actually, Ion. When I, when I was in um, when I was in Romania, it's Ion, and Ion's also done in, in Scottish. Like the, like uh, it, it's the same name, but they use a different spelling. So Ion is like it could be it could be it could be Romanian, it could be Scottish. I don't know what. Yeah, I think maybe uh, Zierling. Maybe it's German. I don't know because I don't know. But there were so many different spellings of Ian. And, how, and and you know, Ian means just John. And I always said to my mom, I was a kid, if my name means John, why don't you just name me John and save me all the trouble? Now it's like a common name, but you know, when I was a kid, no one ever heard of it. And and I only got two syllables, and so people could pronounce it. My nickname became E. Everyone just called me E, and I'm like, okay, so you take my two syllable name and turn it into a one syllable name, and that's easy. Education system in America stinks. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. I don't know if everybody has dropped out of the Spreaker chat room, but literally I'm down to Andrew Shalan, one of our new listeners. This is night number two for him listening. Andrew, thanks so much for giving us the opportunity. I don't know where everybody went. Usually everybody is, is packed in there. I'm blaming Spreaker tonight. I really am, because I know Joe Roop, uh, KTLK, is having troubles with our signal tonight. I hope the other guys aren't. But we're running with it. What the hell? And we got Bumblefoot cranked in the background. Hold on. I love my Bumblefoot. Love him. <laughs> love him. Yeah, where the hell did everybody go in the chat room? Maybe they got booted or something. Maybe they lost the signal. Maybe they're on the other chat. You know what? Sometimes Spreaker chat I'm... sometimes Spreaker chat actually splits. I've seen that happen. Where it's actually split. Yeah, that... Dave refresh because Demetrio, Shar, John, Corey, everyone's in the other chat room. Okay, on Spreaker? Yep. I'm in the Spreaker chat right now. Uh, John just said, we're all here. Uh, so, yeah, just refresh your uh, Spreaker chat. Oh, God. See, I can't in the studio. That's the problem. I don't know how. Ah, okay. Hold on. Let's go like this. Let me let me get the other. Let me, let's see if this one works. i got to find everybody. No, that's just showing me only Andrew as well. I don't know where everybody is. Where are you all hiding? <laughs> You're all lost. <laughs> They've all been abducted. By by Marvin the Martian. They've all been abducted. Seriously, I got no, I got no, I got nobody but me and Andrew. Andrew, it's kind of romantic. So, uh, Andrew, are those your real horn rim? Are those your real horn rim glasses, Andrew? Is that what they are? They're all in the other chat room. Yeah, I'm I can't, talking to I can't him all right it. now. <laughs> hey, uh, God of Thunder, who we call Canadian Joe around here, has a question for you, Ian. Ian, okay, were you once a drummer in a rock group at one time? I was a bassist in a in a Kiss cover band called the Thunderheads when I was in high school. <laughs> I used to I used to play with uh, WDFA, whose drummer. Mike Portnoy went, is the drummer for Dream Theater. We used to open for them. Nice. Nice. Rock and roll, man. Rock and roll. Yep. I spit blood every night. I let my hair grow long. Hey, did, hey, did you see uh, my, my pictures I posted on my uh, Facebook I, I, page I, when I, I was 15 with Brian Setzer? I did. I did. That was pretty awesome. Brian Setzer... You know what? I wasn't a big Stray Cats fan, but I can tell you this, man. I can tell you this. When he went to the Brian Setzer Orchestra, he took it up a notch. He totally oh, took. That's it. why. That's why he left. Uh, that, you know, I mean, he was like a kid, or he was still a kid. He left the Stray Cats, went at the top of their game, and went solo. And then it, the solo created work, and all of a sudden he went to the orchestra. Sound like that, Brian? And he took off. It was amazing. I got to tell you about that day. I'm 15 years old, and my neighbor and I are waiting for Brian to show up because my neighbor is friends with Brian from the time they were kids, and he's the drummer on the White Picket Fence album. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this rumble, like you couldn't believe, is coming down the block, and it's this old car with flames on it. And I go, oh, my God, that's Harrison Ford's car from American Graffiti. 
he bought the actual car. And I got to drive the first time I drove before I had my learner's permit or anything. He asked me if I knew how to drive, and my dad was teaching me, getting me ready for my learner's permit. And I got to drive Harrison Ford's car from American Graffiti with Brian Setzer. Beauty. <laughs> I was 15 years old. Beauty. <laughs> Beauty. Uh, yeah. Hey, Dave. Dave. Yeah. Be- beyond, the, uh, beyond the Omniverse, what's to know what your musical influences are? Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I, I was always into rock and roll. My parents never played rock and roll. I remember going on every road trip with my parents, going from 8-track tape to cassette deck, and it was all like either 50s music or, or some sort of Don Jones-type country music. Like that real twangy crap that, that you know really should be put down to rest, much like the game of soccer, right? And... <laughs> And it wasn't until I started, like, my sisters used to, uh, my sisters are 10 and 7 years older than me. And all of a sudden, I, I, my, my oldest sister, she was really into, like, Street Heart and, and all of these bands, Aerosmith coming up. And I was like, damn, that's good. And then, everybody remember when, when on NBC they used to play Friday night videos? Oh, God, I love them. Absolutely. So Friday night videos comes on. And I see Def Leppard fooling, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, what is this? And then one of the guys, this is around grade five for me, so I was about 11 years old, and one of the guys that, uh, that I, I met, a guy named Mike Hodsell, I mean, who could literally pass for a twin to Dimebag Daryl, plays some seriously sick guitar, too. He introduced me to like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, and and I was like, oh, this is just absolutely awesome. Then I learned about Van Halen because this was right when 1984 was coming out, you know, Mm -hmm. and and I was just like, oh, this is just fantastic. I mean, who who didn't get excited when when Panama came on the radio, you know? And you're sitting there, you're sitting there, you're sitting there with your double cassette deck trying to hit record and play at the same time in order to grab it off the radio. And you're just praying, praying that the DJ doesn't speak over the song before or after. You know those days? <laughs> uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, you know, my cows, I made my cows listen to heavy metal. Yeah. So the simple fact that, you know, growing <laughs> I, I did, I did. And there's a reason for that, because I, I, I showed Holsteins in the fair. Right? When, I, when I grew up, I was in 4-H. And when you're showing cows, I mean, you're at a fair, you got carnival music in the background, you got to get them used to loud noise. So I lock them up in the barn, and I take uh-huh. my little AM radio, because it was back in the 80s. You remember the little AM radios you could put in your pocket? And I crank it up on the, the wildest heavy metal station I could find, which mm-hmm. picked up Seattle. And I, I, about two hours a day, they listen to heavy metal, and after a while, they're dancing. I mean, hell. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it, 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 <laughs> uh-huh. it, it got it got it got them used to where if I was showing uh, the the carnival music in the background or whatnot, yeah. didn't phase them. So. Well, I, I can tell you this: 1987 is where the whole world changed for me. That's when I heard "Sweet Child of Mine" for the first time, and I fell in love with GNR, and I was like an instant fan. And I remember that Christmas, my sister's boyfriend bought me Ap- the Appetite for Destruction cassette. And I, oh. started, I started listening to it, and it was Welcome to the Jungle, and, and then, you know, It's So Easy, and it, it plays right through. And then I hear song number six, Paradise City. Mm-hmm. And I just went, oh my God, that's it. That's the greatest song ever to me. That's just the greatest song ever. And I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. And so that's how I got to become a GNR fan was in 1987. And, you know, it was absolutely incredible for me to have that experience and to be... It was the first music I really bonded with. You know, where I felt, yeah... You know how as kids we're always like, man, that's about me. That's about me. You know, that's what it was about. That's how I became a GNR fan. I never got to see the original band play. Uh, I had tickets in 1992 at BC Place in Vancouver, 
This is when Metallica, Faith No More, and GNR were were rocking together, and they were doing a show in Montreal, and James Hetfield uh, had his hands burned because he stood too close to an exploding pyrotechnic. So he was hurt, and then Axel lost his voice, so they canceled the show in Vancouver. Had tickets for the next one that got canceled again, and it wasn't until 2011, December 18th, 2011, when I actually, I actually saw Guns N' Roses for the first time. Sure, it was Axel and friends, and I went in there with the attitude, you know, this is a Guns N' Roses, you know, who is this guy? Who's that guy? Who's this Bumblefoot guy? Who's DJ Ashba? Who's Richard Fortas? You know, who? who's Tommy Stinson and Frank Ferrer? Like, what the hell are these guys? You know, but there was Axel. And then all of a sudden you hear the voice. And then all of a sudden you hear, you start listening, you know, damn, these guys are pretty good. So I went back in 2012 to watch GNR at the at the uh, their first residency at the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas. And, like, Bumblefoot doesn't even know. The picture that we have, if you go to spaceoutradio.com and you check out the picture of Bumblefoot playing, uh, if you move all the records, because you can move all his records on there, and you see him just kind of leaning back playing his, his d- black double B foot, okay? I-, I took that photo. Like, that's how close to the stage I was. I took that photo, and I actually sent it to him on Twitter, and he and I remember he liked it on Twitter, and I was like, ah, Bumblefoot likes it. Like, how cool is that, right? And then the, I'll tell you the story of how I met him. This might as well. I'm I'm halfway there already. So, anyhow, 2014 comes along. My wife sends me for my birthday. So right now, at this moment, in about 12 minutes. I'm listening to DJ Ashba start to rock Chinese democracy in 2014 at the Hard Rock. I saw GNR three times in six nights. Now, that birthday concert, I got pissed off, okay? I got really pissed off because at pa- during the song Paradise City, you hear Axl Rose blow a whistle about a minute in, and he takes that whistle and he throws that whistle into the crowd. That whistle is the final final item on my bucket list i have some subtitles on there okay i have some subtitles like i'd like to play in the world series of poker i would like to i've never seen you know that that caribbean blue ocean water i'd like to see that i would like to go across the pond and see something else you know because i've never been outside of north america you know i want to see my son get drafted into the nhl right that's in 2031 you know, so there are certain things that I have goals for, but the last bucket list item is the Paradise City Whistle. So, literally, I'm studying game tape of GNR concerts. Where does Axel stand? Where is he going to throw that whistle? And I got the place. I'm right there. And Paradise City comes on, and here come, and right before Paradise City, this six foot five brute. Okay, decides to walk right in front of me with his two women. Guess what hits that MFer in the face? You're the whistle. The whistle. You're the whistle. I put my arms up because I just got these short little Tyrannosaurus Rex arms, right? Like I can't scratch certain parts of my back. These little things that I got, they don't work very well. Okay. And I literally, oh, here it comes. My buddy Mike's with me. I'm like, here it comes, here it comes. Let's get it, let's get it. And it hits the idiot in the head, and it falls right into his arms. So oh. he, he's like, he's like, what the hell is this? Oh, that that's kind of cool. So I tap him on the <laughs> shoulder. I'll tap him on the shoulder, and I said, sir, I apologize. It's my birthday. I got four hundred bucks in my wallet. I'll give it to you for the whistle. And he turns back. I tap him on the shoulder again. I said, I'll give you 500 bucks for that whistle. It's the last item on my bucket list. It is my birthday. I'll do anything for that whistle. And he goes, get out of here. And he, like, he's just rude about it, right? So he gets to the catwalk. I tap him on the shoulder once again. I said, I'll give you $1,000 for it right now. 
for that whistle. It's the last item on my bucket list. I need that whistle. F off, asshole. Hey, hey, probably gear school, kid. You know what? That whistle's probably in a drawer somewhere. You know, whereas me, I would have it framed. There would be angels singing on it. You know, it it would have its own (laughs) special lighting. You know, the Mm -hmm. last item. And then shortly after that, I didn't. I went to the show two more times, and I couldn't. I couldn't get the whistle. Axel changed up his game plan on me. It really screwed me up. But three weeks later, I find out Bumblefoot is playing in Vancouver on his solo tour on the Guitar Gods tour with Gary Hoey and Ingve Malmsteen. And if you've Yngwie. never seen, and if you've never seen Ingve play guitar, it's really sad. I mean, he's an incredible guitarist, but it's really sad watching a 54 year old guy in spandex pants with cowboy boots pulled over top of the spandex pants doing leg kicks. Okay, it's not attractive. Okay, it's just Thank not. You, Dave, we've got to bleach my mind now. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly, it's mm-hmm. just not attractive. Anyways. So Bumble, I'm I'm chatting away with Bumblefoot online because you know like hey dude like I haven't met him at this point hey dude coming to your show in Vancouver just saw you GNR in Vegas can't wait and he's like dude we start I'm on the sh- I'm on stage at eight great so I work two hours out of town I got off work at five by the time I drive out to where he was playing it was like because of traffic I got there at like eight o'clock. Okay, walk in and Gary Hoey's on the stage. Oh, I can't wait for Bumblefoot. I can't wait for Bumblefoot. And this dude in the in the front says to me, he already played. He started at seven. All right, Dave. No. Oh, hold on a second. This hey. is a good story. Yo, yo. John's got a question for you. Do you like GNR's version of Knock on Heaven's Door? Yes. There is no bad GNR song. <laughs> The only bad Guns N' Roses songs you will hear are on the Spaghetti Incident. Okay, I got a question. Paul McCarty and Wings live and let die, or GNR live and let die? Oh, GNR, for sure. You're never going to win okay. this. You're never going to win this, man. You know? I mean, if you want to if you want to throw Oh My God in there or Sympathy for the Devil, you know, I mean, let's face it. They're bad. Like, the GNR sympathy for the devil better than the song sympathy for the devil. I think so. I think so. You know, Axel just sings it so demonically. It's fantastic. You know? <laughs> so, so, anyways, getting back to the Bumblefoot story, because we only got like two minutes left before we got to go to break. Okay? So, I'm pissed off. I see Ingve kicking his legs out, and I'm just laughing at this. And, Geriatric Ingve. Exactly. So, after the show... We're getting ready to leave, and my friend's with me, and we're like, let's go to security. We're supposed to be here to meet Bumblefoot. Yeah, okay. So Bumblefoot comes down. Hey, how you doing? And I'm like, good. And my friend who who knows him is like, good, good. Come on, come on backstage. So we go backstage, and he hands me his his list of songs, which I have in the in the cabin wall here. And he autographs it. And I'm like, dude, that's so cool. He goes, tell you what. He goes, let. Let's get out of here. I gotta go downstairs, pack up my stuff, come give me a hand, and then we'll go out to go out to uh, the tour bus. Cool. So he goes downstairs, takes us into his dressing room. He goes, hey, "Do you want some sweaty cheese?" Because he talks very, he talks very like this, you know. And he sits there. We got the iced tea. You want some water? Whatever you want, right? And that's kind of the way he talks. And. And he's like, come on, let's go to a tour bus. So we go to the tour bus. And then out of nowhere, this dude walks up with a with a Les Paul. Like, we're, we're hanging out in the tour bus, just chatting away. And it's kind of weird. And I'm kind of tripping out here, right? Because, A, it's Bumblefoot right there. And, B, I'm in a tour bus. I've never been in a tour bus before. And this dude out of nowhere brings this Les Paul in an amplifier. So Bumblefoot gets out of of the tour bus and in the middle of everything in the middle of the parking lot of where they had played nobody around there's like 20 of us he starts playing all his songs 
So I got a cool. free I got a free concert right there. We're gonna hop out for our second break of the night. Dave's birthday show. I apologize that Spreaker is being a little bit of a douchebag tonight. But that's just the way it is. We will be back with you momentarily here on the Mighty SOR. We gotta step out for our final break. Bumblefoot's gonna continue to play in the back room. I got Ian Holt. It's his birthday too. See on the West Coast, Ian's on the East. It's already tomorrow there, but here on the West Coast, he's still got an hour left to party his birthday with me. My birthday. We got Eric Cooper. We got Robert and Ozzy Rob from Australia. Unless he gets a Sharknado coming through his territory. We'll be right back right after this. Go to spacedoutradio.com. Pick up yourself a t-shirt today. You want to wear one. I do. So you should too. We'll even throw in some stickers for you. Help spread the word. We'll be right back. Looking for a great weekend getaway this fall? Hi there. This is Dave Scott. Come on up to the heart of British Columbia for the first annual Spaced Out Radio Caribou Paracon, being held at the Spruce Hills Spa and Resort in 108 Mile Ranch, British Columbia. Speakers from all over North America are coming to discuss Bigfoot, UFOs, ghosts, and intuitiveness for the three-day event, September 29th to October 1st. For more information, go to spacedoutradio.com and click on the Caribou Paracon banner and book your tickets today. Come to BC, where the paranormal is waiting for you. The SOR Sightlines is a place for you to find answers to your strange experiences. Hi there, this is Mike Schmidt. If you have had an encounter with ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, ETs, or anything else that doesn't make sense, head to spacedoutradio.com and file a Sightlines report. All information you give is 100% confidential, and I will personally help you find the answers you need. SOR Sightlines. Your answers are a click away. Have you got your Cosmic Passport? If you need one, tune in to Cosmic Passport on Spaced Out Weekend. This is Elizabeth Anglin, ET experiencer, spirit medium, and host of Cosmic Passport. Each weekend, I'll be bringing you interviews and support from other paranormal experiencers and the best in intuitive spiritual guidance from across the globe. It's all happening starting at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, midnight Eastern, on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there. I'm Butch Witkowski, lead investigator with U4COP. On the final Monday of every month, you can listen to me and host Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio's Strange Days. We're going to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to what's happening out there. People are seeing and experiencing things from ET contact to Bigfoot, and I want to hear about it. Your experiences are what we investigators need to help solve these unknown mysteries, so tune in at spacedoutradio.com to the final Monday of every month from Butch Wachowski's Strange Days. This is your medium, Joanna, from Spaced Out Weekend, Two Mediums and a Large. I would love it if you would come and join us with host James Tyson every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. Together, we will take your calls and your questions live. Our goal is to provide you with a positive outlook on deep questions that you may have. Questions regarding love, relationships, money, or whatever else is on your mind. Come and check us out at spacedoutradio.com. This is Eric Markham, news editor for Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories, from alien encounters to the latest conspiracies. You won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top-notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter, online, only at spacedoutradio.com. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. 
SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Don't have time to listen to Spaced Out Radio Live? Wherever you are, the car, the office, the shower, or even if you're traveling, we're right here for you. Each Spaced Out Radio show can be found on iTunes, TuneIn, and on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's the perfect way for you to catch up on our shows. For more information, just head over to our website, spacedoutradio.com, and tune in to us today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you'd join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Did you know that Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi, it's James Tyson from Spaced Out Weekend. Every Saturday and Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, you can join me and my guests for some great chatter about what's going on out in the universe or even in that dark part of the basement you really don't want to go back into. Well, let's find the answers to your experiences together. So come on up to Uncle Jimbo's cabin on the weekend. For more information, look us up at spacedoutradio.com. The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio, Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and hashtag Spaced Out Radio. And on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the final hour of Dave's birthday show tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Good to have you with us. So glad that everyone is involved. Spreaker people, I apologize. For some reason, I can't see any of you. I don't know what the hell is going on. I have a feeling... But I'm not a technical guy, so I'm, I'm going to make sure that we can get this going. Tomorrow night on the program, John Tenney is going to join us. We are going to be live at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time at spacedoutradio.com. We want to welcome in everyone listening in on the United Public Radio Network, a 107.7 FM in New Orleans and over 160 countries around the world. Good to have you see us and be with us on a nightly basis. We're also live on WQEE 99 Rock the Key down in Noonan, Georgia. Georgia, home of the walking dead. We are also live on KTLK, the fringe FM renegade talk radio out of Las Vegas. And if you're listening in on revolution radio, remember the double R machine is a donation station financed by you. The value listener head on over to freedomslips.com and donate today. Bill Cardwell has set the password for tonight in the SOR space travelers club. Panchimagog. Panchimagog is your password for tonight, so make sure you use it wisely, space travelers, as Bill sets a password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Tonight we got a whole freebie happening here, and we're just hanging out. We're hanging out. But before we start the final hour of Dave's birthday celebration with Spreaker acting like a jerk tonight, I do want to remind you that our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including joining the SOR Space Travelers Club for 5 bucks a month. You can also go to our Spaced Out Radio store, pick up a t-shirt, pick up a sticker, pick up a poster. We're going to have Carl the Alien candles there very, very soon, or check out the encounter online. 
So when you're checking out the encounter, read up on some really cool stories. We're going to get some new features coming up here as well. Everett, stop. Is your beard messing with your phone? Yeah, a little bit. I thought you shaved it. <laughs> I, I shaved most of it. All right. All right. We got Everett Themer, birthday boy Ian Holt, a fan favorite around here. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. We got Ozzy Rob all the way from Australia. We got Eric Cooper. However, we never know if it's Coop or his beard talking. And we got another caller on the line, area code 503. Who is this tonight? This is Darren from the Monster Castle. Hey, Darren, what's going on? <laughs> Darren! <laughs> hey, Happy Darren. birthday to you guys. I got to meet you, Dan. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dave. How old are you? I am 44 today. Going on 18. Birthday. You know what? I do have to say this, Darren. You bring up an interesting point. You know, this, this is the first year that my parents, and I love them to death. I got great parents, okay? Even watching them bark at each other like they do. Like, they are miserable together, but I think they'd be more miserable without each other. You know, I got those type of parents that could start an argument because there's a fly flying around the house or something along those lines. But anyways, this is the first year, first year that... I never got a present from my parents. So I open up the birthday card, and usually, like, Dad will always slip... You know, I don't need it, but Dad will always slip me 20 or 50 bucks in there. Go get yourself something. Go spend something on you. Get some lunch or, or whatever, you know? And this was the first year that I just got a card from my parents. And I realized, when I opened it up this morning, that it was like, oh, my goodness... The gifts have stopped from my parents. That sucks. <laughs> Maybe they think you're successful enough now. You don't need it. I don't know. They, they finally feel college. they finally accepted that you're, they finally figured out you're an adult. You know, you are now an official adult. When the president stops the parents, you're an adult. No, that's not cool, man. I still, I still <laughs> want, I still want my presents. Damn it. Oh, by the, hey, by, the way, by, by the way, I do want to remind everyone, if you're listening in the background and you hear, you're like, what's that music? We got Ron Bubblefoot Thal playing all night on the show tonight. So it, it, just sit back and enjoy. Yes, who, who said Dave? That was me. It's the beard talking. So okay. you got a question from Shaw. Yeah. Um, so who who is your favorite guest, Ben, and who do you want to interview? Oh, uh, good question. Very good question. Uh, probably, you know, we've had some incredible guests, and it's hard to single out just a couple. Um, Andrea Perrin was phenomenal when she was telling us the true story behind The Conjuring. Okay, that was incredible to <laughs> to to hear her do that. Uh, Ian has been just an absolute an absolute uh, gem on the show, and I'm not just saying that because. Because he's uh, here, you. okay. Uh, Simon Entwistle was fantastic. I mean, I, I've never had a guest shut down the chat room where everybody is in there, but everybody is so intent on listening to his stories about Jack the Ripper. You know, Ooh, yeah. You know, it, it was it was absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. And and John Tenney, I you know, John will be our guest tomorrow night. But I got to tell you how that happened you know i have heard john tenney for years you know before i started this show i'm a i, I was a coast fan okay I'm, I'm not afraid to admit it you know and i would hear john tenney on the radio or see him on some tv special i'd be like damn that guy is good then about a month or two before we had him booked on for the first time of this show out of nowhere i get a tweet from john tenney and he's like, dude, he goes, you got a great show. And I'm like, man, having, you know, having that come from you, that that's pretty awesome. And, uh, and he's like, so all of a sudden I messaged him privately. I said, I said, thanks for the compliment. You know, what would it take to get you on the show? I said, or pardon me. I said, how did you start listening to us? He goes, I've actually been listening to you for the last six to eight months. He goes, he goes, I think you're one of the best out there. 
And, you know, to get someone of his stature who's held a clean record through everything that has gone on through this show, okay, I was just blown away. Like, here's this guy who, who's a pretty big name in our field, okay, wanting to come on the show and be interviewed by me. I was just, you know, it was one of those things where it was just kind of like, that's cool. That's really cool. And so John's like, now he's like, yeah, he goes, book me every couple of months. He goes, I'm totally game to do your show anytime. And I'm like, yeah, that's the way it should be. That's totally the way it should be. By the way, just so you know, I have, I have, uh, been able to get into the Spreaker chat room. So I am in there guys. I can see your posts, you know? So, um, Thank you for keeping me in touch with everything. I just had to bring it up on a different screen here, uh, but it seems to be working for me now. So yeah, that that's who I who I would like to get on. Oh, the other guy I love, and he causes a lot of controversy, is Doctor James Fetzer on on conspiracy. I mean, what he the information he has been able to, to gather on everything from nine eleven to Sandy Hook. I realize that those are sensitive topics. And everything, but you know, you know, one of those it's one of those topics where you know you either love it or you hate it. But it, it absolutely amazes me the knowledge that that guy has. I mean, people will say he's a wingnut and everything, but I mean, when you talk to him off the air and you and you listen to him, and and, the, and Ian, you know, as being a guest, Coop, you've been a guest on this show you know how important or how in-depth we actually go in those conversations beforehand because they're very personable, you know, and when you talk to them on that level, it's really cool. Uh, Who I would like to get on the show, I would love to get Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Oh, yeah. I would love to get Dan Aykroyd. I I really, you know, if you would asked me that question six months ago, I would have said Tom DeLonge, you know, but... The way Tom is picking and choosing who he, you know, and really favoring certain people to get his message out, you know, about his movie and and the great reveal that never seems to be happening, uh, you know, I'm falling less and less uh, interested in getting him on the air. I really am not. Because if you're going to pick and choose... You should know who the top shows are. You should know, and you should be doing the circuit. You shouldn't be picking and choosing. You know, I can understand because of his fame and and his music career and everything that, you know, he wants to, you know, protect himself or whatever. Whatever he has, I don't know. Okay? But when it comes comes down to it, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, get Dan Aykroyd because he just, you know, being a fellow Canadian... And being who he is, because I'm a big fan of his, you know, I, and the experiences he has had with, you know, UFOs, paranormal, men in black, I just think it would be phenomenal to see what he has to say on the air. So that's who I'm aiming for. What about you know, Mike, who would be an incredible guest for you? Who's that? And I wish she would do it. I would, I, I, I would talk to, I, you know, I, she doesn't like to do interviews. But, you know, I, I would love to be able to get her on and just ask her to do it as a favor if she'd do it because she hates interviews. But the most incredible person to talk to about the paranormal that I've ever spoken to, Lorraine Warren. Yeah. Absolutely the most fascinating woman. I, I, I mean, I just love her to death. You know, and, and you sit there and you just listen to these stories of all the stuff she's done and and the stories behind it, and you just you just fascinate it. I mean, you know, to, you know, to to, to 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 hear that, you know, she failed at the Amityville house, and the, the demon that escaped is the is the demon that possessed Son of Sam. She believes. I mean, these, I mean, this stuff is incredible. The stuff that comes out of what stories she has. I mean, and the movies that have been made so far haven't even touched some of her most incredible stories she's told mm-hmm. you would love her I mean she's the sweetest woman she is the sweetest woman I just but, don't, I just don't know if she can stay up that late anymore uh, <laughs> how old is she though? oh she's got to be close she's, to 90 by now isn't she, she I think she's in seven now she's my mom's age <laughs> that'd have to be yeah. a pre-record 
Yeah, and the one thing that my audience made me ban was the pre-records. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's one thing that, you know, and especially as we are trying, and here's my thing, Ian, with a lot of people, and, you know, I probably turn down two, three guests a month because they want to pre-record. And this is how, you know, I'm going to pat myself on the back here, so please excuse me for this. There's the Canadian in me again. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, the one thing that my audience hates is a pre-record. And I agree that sometimes it has to be done. But as we are pushing to try and get more, more uh, people listening and more attention of potential producers, uh, program directors, the last thing that I want to do is take a chance at being pre-recorded. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, Dave, you know the key to doing a, a good pre-recorded, I think, is to do like 45 minutes and then pause every once in a while, take questions, talk about the interview. So it's really a live interview with just a pre-record here and there, here and there. And that, those are good. Those work good for our show. We've done that. And it was fun. It's fun. Yeah, I, I get that, Darren. But, you know... It's a different it's a different breed here and I've got I've got a select amount of audience members that I pull every now and again and they don't yeah. want they just don't want I, I agree with you I know we never we never did any pre-recorded interviews on on the morning show we never did those yeah. you know on um, the morning show we, Yeah I mean it was something about the atmosphere you know the energy level because, you know, when two people are talking around a table in a, in a house somewhere or on the phone, it's a whole different vibe. For sure. Well, yeah, Ian, well, I think can... you're right. There's an entirely different feel to an interview when it's done live with an audience versus when you know it's being pre-recorded. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know there, was a, there was, you know, just talking about there was a famous video when... Um, when William Cott and Ben Vereen were on Broadway doing Pippin, and the first, re- and I worked at a video store back then, so I know this. They released it, they recorded it without an audience, and the tape never sold. When they re-released uh, the d- next version, they pulled that one and put the one, put out the one with the audience. It became like the top rental. Really, people do, yeah. people do better when they're a bit nervous and you're live. And they, they turn up their game a little bit more, I think. Well, well, also like, because we're, we're all, all of us in this business are natural hams. So, I mean, give us an audience and, you know, we up our game. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. agree with that. But this, this just like Ken Johnson, I'd love to get on our show. And he said he'd come on any time as long as it's not late. And it's like, ah, you know, I would you, love to have that guy on. I would love for you to have him on. I, I, just, had a, I just had him on last night. You did? You finally did. got him on? I, I oh, was a, that, was a, that was like the second time in two months I've had him on. Yeah. Oh, good, because I met him down there, and I told him you have to be on your show. I work, you know. I left early tonight, but uh, normally I'm working that. during your show. I know you are. So I don't get a listen. I know. I, I understand that. How you did know, it go? It, it went good. You know, I like Ken. Uh I think uh, who he's teamed up with, uh, Brett is a is a very smart guy. He, you know, they've got some interesting theories. They've got some interesting takes on things. I mean, some of it seems really far out there. Others seem very, very in tune with what is going on or what I believe. So, but Ken is interesting, man. Ken yeah. is Ken is a very interesting dude. Hey, Ozzy Rob, you're awfully quiet. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what Amber is laughing at at the computer because she's taken over my, <laughs> for my uh, bit in the um, on the chat room, and she came out she came out before asking if you could see Facebook. Well, of course I could. It's on a because, different computer. Yep. Cool. Cool. Yep. Yes. I love the open line. She's saying to come over and have a look. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She's done something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. She's, pro- she's probably hiding the cheesecake again. <laughs> no, cheesecake. not the cheesecake. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
You're you know, totally off topic. Off topic. I think that's what you want to take over to give him the big old snitch. Okay. <laughs> what's, what, what's that, Ian? I said I've become obsessed with two instruments. I'm, I'm, I'm finding records. Oh, 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 yeah, records. See, I'm, I'm showing my age. I'm finding digital downloads of Heiko drums and diggery doos. Really, I, I had you, I had you pegged for one of those for one of those keyboard guitars. No, no. I there mean, I have obsessed with Heiko drums and diggery doos. I mean, the sound on it is unbelievable. I want to. I want to do. I, in fact, I, I I said to Keith Shockley from from Public Enemy. I said to him, he's doing the soundtrack to Unhinged. And I said, can we work a diggery do into it somehow? <laughs> oh man, you just want the didgeridoo. That's all it's about with you, isn't it? Uh, it's the coolest <laughs> instrument in the world. It is kind of cool. It is kind of cool. Not gonna lie. I watch someone play it. Land, I'm like a double like, like, land that it? circular breathing mode. Right. <laughs> Isn't that what they had on Crocodile <laughs> Dundee? Double one to breathe yes. through your ears. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we should ask uh, Bumblefoot if he wants to put a diggery do in his band. Oh, you know what? <laughs> he probably would. He probably would. Hey, uh, any, I'm curious. Any questions from the chat rooms? You guys... Uh, I'm looking here. I'm not seeing any okay. questions. Bichio Be- Be- wants to know what we predict for the next six months. And for one, Paracon. Well, let me. Uh, I can. I can tell you what I'm going to predict in the next six months. <laughs> I'm going to predict that uh, it's going to be getting cold here in six months. Real cold, <laughs> right? You know, I just got I, warm, I, I, didn't I? I have the Club of Lang prediction. <laughs> What's that? I have the Club of Lang prediction. Pain. <sighs> Remember that from, from Rocky Free? What do you predict for the fight, Clubber? Pain. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, j- just so you know, there was a comment in the Spreaker chat room about Nick Redfern. He will be on this show for July 5th. <laughs> Nick Redfern on July 5th. Finally, cool, after two cool. years of trying him and finally getting a hold of him. I literally, I literally sent Nick Redfern a message. It was the fifth one invite I had sent him. I said, Nick, I hate to ask you this. I sent it privately on his Facebook. I said, but what the hell do I have to do to get you on Space Out Radio? Is there a produ- you know, a publicist or somebody I got to talk to? And what like it was I was being a jerk about it because like I don't like being turned down, okay, by people ignoring. And finally, he's like, oh, man. He goes, I just saw these. They were in my junk mail. You know, because you know how Facebook has That's that what happened to us. Exactly. Exactly. And he's like, he's like, absolutely, I'd do your show. This sounds like a lot of fun, man. He goes, let me check it out. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So, yeah, we're going to get Nick Redfern on the show. I mean, that guy just seems to be in tune with anything. Maybe Tom DeLong could learn some ideas from them. But that's just me saying that. Did we ever tell uh, a story of how we met? What happened? Uh, you know what? I I was looking for a Dracula guy, and I and I emailed you. I believe you sent me a a, a, a message on Messenger, and I, and you sent it you sent it like when the book came uh, when the book was out uh, in the paperback, and at that time I was setting up to do my vampire reality show or it was like a 13 part reality show miniseries for South Korean television about the vampires in Ybor City and um, you sent asked me to come on the show and the same day you sent it I was swamped by this vampire called Ron Henry and his entire coven you've got to put Ron Henry on your show and this guy is known as a poser, not a real vampire. So I said no, and I had like a hundred of these, and I didn't, I didn't know how to delete them. And then when they updated the Messenger app, there was an easier way to delete it, so I started deleting all these things from Ron Henry's cover, and all of a sudden I saw, you know, it's like, you know, it's like the Daughter of Darkness, you know, uh, blood, Bloodbound, Dave Scott, 
And I'm like, well, something doesn't fit here. So I hit Dave Scott. I see like, and this is a year later. This was sitting on my messenger for a year. And I texted Dave and I was like, I'm so sorry, man. I, I you know, I, I lost your uh, your text. It was, it was like a year later I answered you. And I said, uh, I, yeah, I'd be happy to do your show if you still want me. And you were like, yeah, that's how we met. But it sat there for a year buried in vampire text. <laughs> Skeptic on hashtag Space Out Radio on Twitter says, wait. He's not a real vampire? Are you sure? I'd hate to be wrong about a thing like that. That is quality snark. I'm going to clap for that snark, skeptic. I'm going to clap for that snark. Good job. Good job. Skeptic, stop shopping that 26. Exactly. And Rahonda on Twitter at hashtag Space Out Radio says, Happy birthday, Dave. May you get your close encounter of the third kind, and may it be benevolent. Well, I hope so. And and you know what? I feel it's coming. I feel it's coming. You know, I I don't know how to explain it, okay? But sometimes I just get feeling. I'll tell you a little story here, because Gail wanted me to tell this story. And I don't know if Gail's still around in the Space Out Radio chat room or not. She may have fallen off, went to sleep. But I did my my monthly ghost hunt at the museum this weekend to help raise money for it. And we went in there with Canadian Paranormal Investigations on the Friday night after the show. So after the show last Friday, I literally got out of my house, drove to the museum where the team was. We all had met up there, and I unlocked a couple of buildings, and we went and did a tour. Actually, it was just one building that we did, and we went and did a tour. And in this old post house, there is this dude in there. I've, I've now found out his name is Willie. Okay, and Willie was pissed off with me. He doesn't like the tour. He doesn't like, uh, and we found that out from James Tyson, who's really good psychic friend on the weekend from the shift. Skeeter Wellhouse uh, was was talking to him about this, and Willie was really really cranky with me because he didn't like the tour. He didn't like all the technology. He didn't like people hanging out in the closet where he is. Right, So all of a sudden, I, I'm kind of tired about it. And one of the teammates, Kelly, she's an ET contactee. Really, really isn't, like the paranormal interests her, but she's more into ETs and, and UFOs. So I'm picking up this strange energy, and, and she's picking it up. And her and I go outside this building while the rest of the team is, is you know hanging out in there and doing their thing. And we start walking towards the lake. And right, that's right behind the museum. And, and literally, what happens next is, do you remember that scene out of Signs where they were in the cornfield and you'd hear the one running ahead of you and then it would stop yeah. and then, say, to your left, there would be another one running? Uh. Right, right? Well, that stuff mm-hmm. starts happening in the reeds. Now, I can't, wow. I'm not sitting here saying that that was extraterrestrial. Okay, it could have been a bear, it could have been a deer, it could have been a dog, it could have been a wolf, could have been a cougar, whatever. Okay, but no, not in that area. But it was just (laughs) really, it was just really interesting how all of a sudden, just out of the blue, it was just like the movie Signs, man, where you heard the noise and we got the flashlight looking ahead of us, trying to pick up where this sound of walking through the reeds is coming. And then it would stop, and then right to the left of us, behind one of the buildings where there's more reeds, we'd hear it cr- something crunching in there as well. So it was totally, totally eerie. And her and I go back. Well, at this time, one of the investigators, James Vincent, gets attacked by Willie in the house. Okay? Well, uh, and, gets yeah. po- and gets possessed by him. Okay, this is all on camera, guys all on camera. And here's the oh, weird wait. part. James is is literally standing staring at this under this little closet underneath the stairway and you hear this door all of a sudden slam uh, slam open. Okay? It's weird. I know it sounds weird, but it's it's slammed open. And Kelly and I caught our attention and James has no recollection. He was the only one on the bottom floor has no recollection of opening that door. That door opened on its own. Okay, so anyways, the next, so we set up a couple of trail cams in there, and 
Everybody is like, Dave, this guy is after you. This dude wants you. He is pissed off. He is upset that this is that this is uh, you know happening. And Willie, not you. It's okay. A different Willie. <laughs> <clears throat> you know. But he's pissed off this is happening. So, anyways, uh, two nights ago, I had a talk with Skeeter. And Skeeter is one of the most, and Eric Cooper, you know her personally. She is probably, oh, yeah. uh, she's part of your remote viewing team on Force yep. Moon Paranormal. And Skeeter is probably one of the most talented. So, Skeeter and I are talking on the phone because we got two problems happening in my house. Because previous to this ghost hunt, my wife woke up a week and a half ago in the middle of the night and she looked at her she couldn't move her arms and she looked down at her arms and all she saw was black hands and wrists holding her down okay now this was also Willie doing this because he's pissed off at me about the tour so mm -hmm. Skeeter through Skeeter her and I start having a conversation with Willie and I tell Willie you know, dude, I'm not here to bug you. I'm here to raise money for the museum. You know, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not here to to upset you or anything. So we found out a few things. He doesn't like the technology. Okay? He doesn't like the fact that people come in there and they ask stupid questions. Like, can you knock on the walls three times? So we go through, <laughs> we, we go through all this stuff, okay? And finally, I'm able to get to him. I said, is there anything that I can do for you? Because he, he lives in this closet. That's his safe spot. And to be honest with you, we, we had learned that somebody years ago had committed suicide in that closet. And I think it was this Willie. Okay? So it's kind of his, his place. So I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do for you, Willie. I am no longer going to allow anybody in the tour to go in the closet. That's your space. Okay, no photographing the closet, no nothing. So uh, on June 10th, when we do our next tour, I'm going to make sure that Willie uh, is, not, um, is not being bothered in there. So anyways, what happens then is I said to Willie, through Skeeter, I said, Willie, can I help you out with anything else? He goes, I want a beer. Yep. Okay. So Willie and I, on, on June 10th, before the tour starts... I'm going into this building, okay, by myself. And I'm going to bring two beer. One for me and one for Willie. And I'm going to have a conversation with Willie. And he wants a bottle of beer, not a, not a can. Because what he's going to do for me, and, and I'm curious to see if this is going to work, and I promise I, I will report this if it, if it happens, okay? And I think it will. Okay, but what I'm going to do, he wants me to unloosen, so to break the seal of the of the beer and just sit the beer cap on there. Okay, who is that? Did you guys hear that? I heard it. It wasn't me. Did anybody just, did you guys just hear that? I heard of that's awesome, but it wasn't one of us. I didn't that, say a word. Dude, we just... Dude, what the hell was that? That was Willie. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm serious. You guys heard that? I right? am. Yeah, I, am too. I heard it too. What was it? It was just like this voice that just came through. This male voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, male voice said that. That's awesome. And I, I'm telling you, it was it was, it was Willie. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, Willie's Wait. listening in. Then. I I don't know if you heard, you guys just heard that. Okay. Just, I did. All right. I heard no, it. I, I know, but I'm just saying in the chat rooms and on Twitter. Okay. Okay. They, everybody has heard that. Okay. I'm like goose bumping the hell out of myself right now. But anyways, <laughs> Will, Willie I'm and I. Myself, I missed it. <laughs> well, you, you you know. Uh. Anyways, Dave. So, Dave, that that's. That's what happens on Space Start Radio. Exactly. We get lots of weird stuff like that. All right. So anyways, what happened was, uh, I'm going to crack the beer open for Willie. Okay. And I'm just going to loosen the top. And apparently he has the strength because he's the guy who, who flung that door open. He has the strength to take that beer cap off. Okay. Like he has, and, and so 
I, I, I don't know if he'll do it in front of me, okay? But I know I'm going to be the only one in that building while there's a beer there, okay? And I'm going to leave that beer in there for him. And I'm going to put it in a safe spot. And hopefully we will be able to uh, see if that beer cap moves. And I'll let you all know if uh, if that happens. Are you guys still no hearing technology? that? Is that anybody trying to talk? I, I, I'm he- I've heard it like two, three times now. I'm hearing a couple little short, almost mechanical sounding yeah. voice blip like things. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering mm-hmm. if it's any of you guys, because I, I know it's not on my end. I'm pretty sure it's not me. Okay, it's so quiet here. All right. It's all quiet here. All so. right. Yeah, it's all quiet here weird. too. Well, we're either getting some weird type of feedback or, or something is happening. I don't know what it is, but th- that's kind of cool. A- anyhow. I'm telling you, the men in black coming to get you. <laughs> well, I don't know about right. that, but I but I could tell you this, man. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a couple of beers down for Willie and me, and we're gonna have a chat. And he just wants to be talked to. Uh, he just wants to be talked to like a human being, okay? Like he doesn't want the stupid questions. He just wants, hey, man, we're here. How are you? How you been keeping? All that kind of stuff. That's what he wants. And and you know what? I can respect that. I'm gonna do that. So I'll fill you in. Uh, on Monday the twelfth, if that happened or not, hopefully Willie will move the beer can li- or the beer bottle lid for me or the cap for me. It'll be cool. I, I mean, I gotta admit, I probably might have a little poo, but if if that happens, <laughs> but, but <laughs> let us know if any of you have points. I will. Isn't the I whole will. point point of a ghost tour though to to see a ghost? I mean, why do you want to make them so happy? Don't you want to see some some action? Yeah, but okay, you can look at it that way. But it, is it our job to piss them off? Absolutely, yeah. Right. That's I don't, how we get our yeah, evidence. This proves that they exist. The poor guy down there under the stairs all the time. Well, he's up, he's upstairs in a closet, right? But he um, now, now have you have you looked in the records and try to find someone like, uh, you know that yes that maybe the police records that someone actually committed suicide in well, that closet. Well, have you been able to verify that? The building the building is 150 years old, okay? There was a lot of murders in, in that building, okay? And it's currently only half the building it used to be. It used to be a, a, a bar, a hotel slash brothel during the old Gold Rush trail days. And so there was a lot of depression back then, and apparently he hung himself. Now, I have learned this from the museum's historian, Okay, who's done all the research? I have not personally looked into it, but that's that's what I know of it so far. Okay, that there is record of of a man hanging himself in that closet. Yeah. Well, see now that, that, not, now, now, the, now the thing is to take that information if you have the name and everything, and then present it to Willie and see what happens. Well, I mean that's something we got to try. It's something we got to try, and we're going to look into it. But first, I got to make peace with him because if he's attacking people to try and get to me, I, uh, yeah. I will, uh, you know, I, I got to calm that situation down right now because I can't have any of my tourists coming in there and getting getting beat up by a ghost. You know, I mean, it sounds funny and crazy, but you know, I don't want to piss him off, and that's his home. And I just want to make sure that, you know, everything is A-OK with him. Now, the second weird story is this, guys, that Skeeter came up with, is there is an alien spiritually in my house who's upset with me. And Hmm. it's a little gray dude who's connected to Samantha Mowat. Because Samantha has been going through some health problems the last couple of months and hasn't been able to be on the show. Well, somehow these alien dudes got it in their head that I've canceled her from the show. Because she isn't scheduled. Well, I guess they can't read English. Because if they looked at my schedule for June, on the 13th, Samantha Moet will be back. On the air. And... So I had to sit there and have a conversation with some E.T. that I can't see through Skeeter Wellhouse, letting them know that I didn't boot Samantha off the air 
that they should already know that she's been having some health problems that she's been dealing with, and that I would never boot her off the air. So we got that situation cleared up, too. So I'm all good with that, and I hope they are, your, too. Your, your, your house is a candy store, like Tony told you. Exactly. <laughs> you got a alien drama. You got a plethora of things going on. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> Try living here. Try living here. <laughs> well, I've been having some weird stuff happen. Tell me. So, my, I have a garage and a back door to the garage, and it locks. And you got to, like, really pull it to lock it, and it jams. So, it's hard to open. So, the other night, it started now that... I, my bed is against the back wall, and if you go down from my bed, it's right over the back garage door. And so I started hearing this bang. Two minutes later, bang. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I hear it like coming from the other side of the wall beneath me. So I go out of my deck from my bedroom, and I see that when the wind blows, my back garage door is open and closing. This is like 2 in the morning. So I go out, and I slam the door shut, and I check the lock, and I close it. And that thing is jammed closed. I get back upstairs, and I go to bed, nothing. The next night, bang, bang, that door is open again. And this has happened, like, now already, like, four times where I got to go out and, like, really kick the door into the jam slot because you can't just pull that open and there's a gate there's this really high gate you can't get behind my 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 co-op townhouse you can't get behind it so i i it, it just how does that door just open like that and it's interesting that it happened because i just had my garage renovated again because we found mold again from from hurricane sandy and they, they finally treated it right and so they did some good and they always say you know when you do construction these things happen. You change something, and it pisses whatever's down there off. So this door is just bang. It just opens. I don't, I, you know, there's no way it could happen accidentally. There's no way. Mm hmm. That is weird, man. You got to send Cooper's uh, paranormal team in there. He'll be able to tell. Mm hmm. Cooper, you got to do me that favor. It's his birthday. Okay. I'd okay. love it. If I can see if the team's even on right now, we've been we've been so slammed. I don't even know who's on right now. <laughs> I don't know either, man. I don't know. Uh yeah. <laughs> John Porter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio has a question. He says, "When Bumblefoot was little, was he Bumble Toe?" <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. High quality Stark, there, John. High quality start. <laughs> That's what we like around I mean, I, here. That, that really requires a golf clap and a butt of bump. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. 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 Everett, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Darren, are you still with us or you hang up? I am, I am still here. Good. How about you, Ozzy? Rob, any Sharknados over there in Ozzy land? Yeah. Not recently, no. All right. So they they, they have, they have uh, if they have the, the movie up number four now. They should go on to MS, MST3K. Hold on, we got a call from Alberta coming through here, Northern Alberta, Canada. This I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna take a guess here that this is Bob Davis. You would be correct, sir. Hey, Bob Davis. Hey, give hey, us a Bob Davis. Hey, Bob, Bob Davis. Hey, Bob. Hey, give us those oh, du- give us those dulcet tones, man. Just just let us hear the voice. Happy birthday, brother. I appreciate that, my friend. I appreciate that. Where is the official SOR stonometer at right now? Oh, okay, just a second here. It is let me bring up my fifteen point one. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Horace wrote that in twenty three BCE. And Donald Trump in 2016 wrote, grab them by the blank. You fill in the blank. (laughs) (laughs) Our culture has advanced so far. 
if, if you don't, if you don't, if if you're not in the SOR Space Travelers Club, you don't know uh, Bob very well. Bob is our resident hippie lettuce kind of connoisseur, and he has created the Space Out Radio's official SOR Stonometer. Okay, and I think that what are we at now? Seventeen point two, seventeen point five. Uh, let me bring it up here. The latest one is 17.4. Okay. Uh, does Bigfoot have their version of a television program finding humans, and do they have a better success rate? Oh, that's good. That's good. That's tight, Bob. How you doing, buddy? You, you know what's even scarier? If there's a Bigfoot version of Bobo. What? Just running around farting in the woods saying, Is that a human? Is that a human? <laughs> I, wonder, I, I wonder if the critics of not finding human or no, would actually, would actually, you know, be skeptical if humans actually exist. We might no, be. because we're an infestation. Uh-huh. We're, we're like locusts. We, you know, we overpopulate the earth, use up all its, all all supplies and, and and resources. We're easy to find. We're like flies. That is true. That is true. <laughs> Although you you wouldn't say that around some of New York's people. That's for sure. Ian, mm. Mets fans, <laughs> Mets fans, <laughs> us Yankee fans, us Yankee fans. We're yes. normal folk. Dave, I just Wait. have to say that Ian's Bobo comment just sent coffee through my nose. That's <laughs> <laughs> the stonometer no, went up. That is I'm awesome. I'm from the Williams Lake area as well, and Bobo to the uh, uh, the people there, the, the population there means something uh, uh, altogether different. Yes, yes, I do. Wait, know where's that. Aussie Bob? Did, did everyone see the episode? Where, they, where uh, Finding Book, Bigfoot went to Australia, and Bobo decided to throw a boomerang, and it came back and hit him in the shin, and he broke his ankle. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> really? That's oh. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh. He's around with it for three shows, and his leg swelled up, and he had to go to a doctor because he he, busted, he chipped a bone in his ankle from, from the boomerang. That <laughs> he is tried to awesome. catch it when it came back. <laughs> You know what? That, that, that's well deserved. Poor that Bobo. Is, that is, oh, guys, you sure you guys would have been so proud of my conversation the other day because one of the things I'm starting to take a little bit of a of a of a stand on, and I talked to Everett and and Eric Cooper and Eric Markham about this recently when we were at the Provincetown Paracon, which was just so impressive, right, Everett? <laughs> That was a lot of fun. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, best best Paracon I've ever been to. Ne- next to concrete. Anyways, so yeah, we'll, we'll just keep we'll just keep that sarcasm quiet. But um, <clears throat> where was I? Something about Bigfoot. Oh, you were having a conversation. Yeah. Oh, with this gentleman named Jason Jordan here in British Columbia is part of BFRO, and I'm still looking for a quality Bigfoot researcher from British Columbia for that. And and I ended up getting on this rant with him, and I said, you know what? I said, I know you're part of BFRO. I said, but this is what I'm looking for. I want a guy who can see all sides, because the last thing I want at my Paracon is somebody coming in who is starting to pull the wool over my people's eyes. I said I will not do this 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 tough guy type of talk where I see where I hear all these people trying to talk about how how uh you know Bigfoot is not this it can't be that you know and I'm like it hasn't been proven it hasn't been proven so don't I so I I was actually proud of myself for for standing up to this guy not that I had to stand up to him, but, you know, to actually have the balls from this guy from BFRO, you know, which is a pretty big organization, and tell him, if you if you try and bring up some of that non-science scientific crap that you try and pull, I'll kick you off the stage, pretty much. Woo-woo. Right. I think that's fair. You know, 
call me a little bit of a dick about that. I, I really don't care. But I'm getting real sick and tired of people coming on this show and other shows. And you'll hear it here coming up soon. I'm going to be ha- not having an attitude about it, but I'm going to be calling some of these people out. Because I'm tired of, of hearing the word science be used the way it is in this field when we know damn well that most of these people haven't done anything scientific since grade 9 when they dissect their frog. Well, it, especially when it comes to Bigfoot, because, I mean, for the native peoples, it's a completely different perspective on it. And trying to say that you've got to be scientific about it is disrespecting their religion and their beliefs. And they, they, they believe it's a spirit. And, yes. and, and to disregard that, you know, out of hand, and then, and then, you, then to say, uh, these people, the same people will then use the Native American stories to say, oh, well, these are ancient aliens. So how can you disregard the Bigfoot because you want it to be a real animal, as opposed, and then, and then take, take the Native people's word on their gods are actually visitors from another planet. It doesn't make sense to me. You, you know, you got to be consistent. If you if you accept their stories about or their beliefs as as one in one case, you can't disregard them in the other because you're well, defeating well, your own argument. And that's my whole point. That's my whole point. I am, and, and you know what? If you saw my live uh, feed from the Paracon, I'm going into Eric Cooper's Paracon in September. And I've got a new name for my new speech that I'm writing. And it's called, I Hate the Paranormal. <laughs> okay. And, and, when I, and when I say paranormal, I mean the whole paranormal realm. Because the one thing that I have learned, especially over the last six months in this, is there is so much crap out there right now with people's theories with with their scientific fact that is only truly their opinion but they're passing it off as fact i'm getting sick of it i really am me too you know no. start, you know and like i told, to keep it, go ahead start to keep it fresh like you do i don't know how you can do it like you do you do a great job you know finding new stuff and keeping it fresh to, Darren, if I have to interview uh, uh, one more flat earther, I think I'll pull my hair out. I, Dar- I Darren, I'll, 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 <laughs> Darren uh, uh, I'll give you the I'll give you the fine secret of of why I'm able to do what I can. There's two reasons. Number one, I have a radio background, so I know how to ask the same question in about fourteen different ways until I get right. the answer that I want. But number two, I'm unattractive. Therefore, oh, oh my. <laughs> therefore, therefore, I can hide behind the whole radio thing, okay? I can hide behind the whole radio thing and and express myself with painting pictures rather than having to show this ugly mug on camera because it doesn't work for me. You're not that bad. I saw your live feed. No. Uh, better look than I am. No, the last person to call me pretty was my mom, and you know how you got to take the, that. <laughs> And, and Dave, real quick, I'm giving you money. Yeah, Coop. I've, 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 got, I've got Tony going to Ian's right now. Okay, good. <laughs> good. T- t- get Tony to find out what color boxers Ian has on right now. I want to know. Okay. Uh, uh, gray. <laughs> <laughs> hey, t- tell me what you guys think of a little bit of this. What do you think? Go for it. I think that would be a great idea. Definitely. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) I I, I could probably tell right now that there's a guy named Trip in the Space Out Radio chat room on Spreaker that's probably having an SOR orgasm right now over that one. (laughs) (laughs) Look at him. He's like, over time? Over time? Over time? I can hear it now. I, I have a question for Aussie Bob. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you came to America, I don't care what yeah. you look like. You have that accent. Women will just swoon to you. Now, when Americans come to Australia, do Australian girls swoon over Americans' accent? Some of them do. But... Okay. 
<laughs> Not a whole lot. Um, but most of them you know. might try some of the, some of the beaches. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if now, now I was asking that question for Dave because you mm-hmm. know, he thinks he's. If he thinks he's not that attractive, we'll just send him to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly think you, you would do well in front of the camera, Dave. No, no. No, I, uh, I, I'm... You, you know what? I, I got to tell you a pet peeve of mine, guys. I got to tell you a pet peeve. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's all... And, and kudos to anybody who has their own radio show or trying to broadcast or do, do whatever. But... What confuses me is when you see these people say they're doing a radio show and the only thing they're using is Facebook Live. And so you yep. see you see them relaxing on their couch, their double chin is sticking out because they're they're leaning all back and you know, it's really highly unattractive. It really is. Tell us how you really yeah. feel, Dave. No, I'm serious, <laughs> it bugs me. You know? It bugs me. Well, let's do your radio. I mean, when we did the morning show, we'd show up with bedhead and, like, you That's know, fine. Like, you uh, were up at 3.30 in the morning. You're allowed. That's why most radio, sh- <laughs> that's why most radio stations have showers. It's because of the morning show crew. <laughs> so, no one was, they'd have to disinfect the studio when we when went, out, went out for the morning, for the afternoon show. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I really don't know. I got to see if Doctor Rowe is in the the Revolution Radio Room here because we're going overtime on Double R. I don't know. Maybe they want us. Maybe they don't. But uh, we'll check it out because I accidentally erased the chat room here. I shouldn't have, but I accidentally did. I was closing some windows on my browser and and. A Wisteria at hashtag Space Out Radio. You are not getting ready to go to sleep. You are literally going to be listening to overtime. If I gotta be here, you gotta be here too. So don't even think about leaving. It's rude. You wait till the program's yeah. over, damn it. Wait till the program's over. Oh, what are we gonna talk about, guys? So, so Ian, Ian's going to feel a pull on his jeans as Tony lifts at his boxers real quick. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that, that's nice. I'm, Maybe I'm just a little on, too much I'm information. <laughs> I'm not a fan oh, he of the line. i got to tell Hold you guys. On, he he, he said he's not looking too scary. He's not wearing any. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a hell of a the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> and turn it to the right. <laughs> Hang it to the right. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> That's just terrible. I feel like I'm back in my frat house with all my frat brothers. <laughs> Oh, man. I feel like I'm on with the wolf, man. You know what? I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I, I really hope this isn't the show where I actually have someone listening. It's a that, that would be a plethora of errors right there. A plethora of errors. Oh my god. Oh, it's okay once in a while to have a little fun. By the way, your did, did you guys see? Uh, my birthday's over in less than a minute. Okay? Then we're going to celebrate the hangover. Uh-huh. You know what? I haven't even had a drink on my birthday. Hold on a second here. This isn't good. Oh, you get one then, Dave. Hold on. <laughs> you know, that's what I was saying. You know what? Hold this on. Beer. Here, I mean, here we go. Hold on. Beer. Hold on. Shh, shh, shh. There we go. What was it? Just cracked a beer. There, I drank on my birthday. <laughs> Your first one. So I remember last year, you, you were tore up last year on your birthday show. Oh, that that was Corey. That was Corey whose fault that was. Hey, everybody, you hold on. We're going to overtime here on Dave's birthday party. We're going to celebrate the hangover right after this. Looking for a great weekend getaway this fall? Hi there. This is Dave Scott. 
Come on up to the heart of British Columbia for the first annual Spaced Out Radio Caribou Paracon. Uh, being we're held at the Spruce Hill Radio. Spa and Resort go. in 108 and Mile Ranch, British Columbia. Speakers Everybody thinks from so. all over North America are coming to discuss Bigfoot, UFOs, ghosts, and intuitiveness. Yeah, I'm, for the I'm bugging the people event, right now. September 29th, I'm bugging, I'm, I'm bugging the people right now because I got my microphone Go to spacedoutradio.com and click on the Caribou right Paracon now? banner no, and nice. book your okay. tickets today. Come to BC, where the paranormal is waiting for you. The SOR Sightlines is a place for you to find answers to your strange experiences. Hi there, this is Mike Schmidt. If you have had an encounter with ghosts, UFOs, Bigfoot, ETs, or anything else that doesn't make sense, head to spacedoutradio.com and file a Sightlines report. All information you give is 100% confidential, and I will personally help you find the answers you need. SOR Sightlines, your answers are a click away. Have you got your Cosmic Passport? If you need one, tune in to Cosmic Passport on Spaced Out Weekend. This is Elizabeth Anglin, ET experiencer, spirit medium, and host of Cosmic Passport. Each weekend, I'll be bringing you interviews and support from other paranormal experiencers and the best in intuitive spiritual guidance from across the globe. It's all happening starting at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, midnight Eastern, on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there. I'm Butch Witkowski, lead investigator with Cop. On the final Monday of every month, you can listen to me and host Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio's Strange Days. We're going to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to what's happening out there. People are seeing and experiencing things from ET contact to Bigfoot, and I want to hear about it. Your experiences are what we investigators need to help solve these unknown mysteries, so tune in at spacedoutradio.com to the final Monday of every month from Butch Wachowski's Strange Days. This is your medium, Joanna, from Spaced Out Weekend, Two Mediums and a Large. I would love it if you would come and join us with host James Tyson every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. Together, we will take your calls and your questions live. Our goal is to provide you with a positive outlook on deep questions that you may have. Questions regarding love, relationships, money, or whatever else is on your mind. Come and check us out at spacedoutradio.com. This is Eric Markham, news editor for the Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories, from alien encounters to the latest conspiracies. You won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter online only at spacedoutradio.com. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio, or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Don't have time to listen to Spaced Out Radio Live? Wherever you are, the car, the office, the shower, or even if you're traveling, we're right here for you. Each Spaced Out Radio show can be found on iTunes, TuneIn, and on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's the perfect way for you to catch up on our shows. For more information, just head over to our website, spacedoutradio.com, and tune in to us today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. 
Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Did you know that Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi, it's James Tyson from Spaced Out Weekend. Every Saturday and Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, you can join me and my guests for some great chatter about what's going on out in the universe or even in that dark part of the basement you really don't want to go back into. Well, let's find the answers to your experiences together. So come on up to Uncle Jimbo's cabin on the weekend. For more information, look us up at spacedoutradio.com. The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio. Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and hashtag Spaced Out Radio. And on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. Now, back to the program. A child grew up too fast, we're running wild. Now we don't know who to pray to. Let's do it again. What the hell? Hmm? See, what you guys don't get to see is on my Budweiser red light, which is that horn. It actually spins a red light. Like, if you're a hockey fan, you know that when you score a goal, the red light spins. So that's... It's that's actually, what the sound is. That's what the sound is. Every, it, time you press that, every time you press that button, I keep hearing, and the fog rolled into Antonio Bay. Exactly. <laughs> We're on overtime tonight on Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. I'm officially 44 years old. The birthday party is over. We are celebrating hangover time, even though I'm literally only three sips into my first beverage of the night. But you know what? The beautiful part about it is, I know we're on a couple of terrestrial radio stations. WQEE 99 Rock the Key down in Noonan, Georgia. And on the United Public Radio Network 107.7 FM in New Orleans and over 160 countries around the world. We still broadcast mainly on the internet, so we can get away with things like having a beverage during the show, or Bye. using the odd curse word, even though we try and keep it as clean as possible, because we are professionals around here. But I do want to say, before we go any further, do, do me a favor, visit spacedoutradio.com, check out the plethora of features that we have going, because we got a cool and always revolving website we got the encounter online our great news section by eric markham and everett themer we have our brand new spaced out radio store we're starting to sell a pile of t-shirts we want to sell more and get that word out there because when you're wearing our swag what it does is it helps promote what we do here and so that's why I'm pushing the T-shirts, I'm pushing the posters, I'm pushing the stickers really, really hard. Because the more we can get that Spaced Out Radio name out there, whether you put that sticker on your car, whether you show off that poster to your friends that I'm going to autograph for you, and I'm going to put a personal note on there for you, or whether you're, you're out in town wearing that Spaced Out Radio T-shirt, that helps us out. That helps us grow. So make sure you go to the store, pick up your t-shirt, your sticker, or your poster, because I want to send it to you. I want to make sure that you're helping out to get our name across as well. That would help us out so, so much. So make sure you go get a t-shirt. While on our website as well, you can check out the Bubblefoot feature. We also have the SOR Space Travelers Club that you can join for 5 bucks a month. On the phones with me tonight, 
I got a bunch of friends. I got Bob Davis from Edmonton, Alberta. A great beard. A great, great beard on him. Another great beard with me is Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal. From Monster Castle, Darren is with us. Ian Holt, Dracula extraordinaire. He'll suck the blood out of anything. Everett <laughs> Themer from The Encounter Online. And all the way from Australia, we got Ozzy Rob. <clears throat> Hold on. Bumblefoot just liked my link. I'm going to message him right now. I'm going to message him on Facebook right and now. And by the way, you're, I have you're no beard. Phone. I'm Alfred Smooth. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to message him right now. See, because I just picked up that he he told me he was sleeping because they got a show tomorrow. Well, we have a question for him. Hold on. Hmm. Let's yeah, see. come to wake up. Hold on. Well, hey. what, was the, what was the question? Is he bubble toe? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not asking him that. I'm not asking him that. Hey, Mister B, I see you're still awake. The show has gone into overtime. Care to call in? Surprise us if you can. One seven zero two three zero two four five five six. Boom. Let's see if he responds. How Let's much see. of an honor would it be if he responded and called in? I don't know. Oh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll soon see. Absolutely great. We'll soon see. Well, that would that would turn this into a legendary show. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. We all got our fingers <laughs> crossed. We're all watching. Oh, is Bumblefoot going to all of a sudden show On our deathbed, we will say we were there oh, that night. Bumblefoot. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, Dave. Yes. You know what I think is going to happen in the next six months? What's that? I think I think Donald Trump's going to hop in his plane and fly out to Area 51 to see it for himself. Oh, man. They're going to go scrambling. He's going to hop off that plane and say, I want to see what's here. Wouldn't that be sweet? Yeah, well, the, the, way he, the way he's, the way he's, the way he's, he's, uh, he's telling all our secrets, our top secrets, they'll clear the place out before he gets there. <laughs> That's what you can do secretly. <laughs> just land on the land on the ground. Will it happen? They'll be scrambling around. Oh my God, the person is here. It'd be great. He'll make he'll make Area Fifty One great again. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Get it no from right no. no. back. Come to the Get the card ready. All right. <laughs> I don't think he's coming, man. I don't. I, you know what? I, 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 I think with Bumblefoot, that that was just a. I, I think it was just a quick cell phone strike. You know, probably lying in bed and checking his posts before shutting his eyes. Did you, you know, know your bir- it was your birthday and we're hungover? Or well, get to, no, get I, don't, hungover? I don't know. I don't know. See, Bumblefoot likes the way we promote him. You know, he really does, and. And he's told me that, Ron has told me that quite a few times. He's so impressed with the way every one of our fans has has messaged him. Because I'll tell you, this guy's a real dude. And Ian, you've been around enough famous musicians to know that they get a little bit of an ego. And all of a sudden, the people who are the ones paying their tickets for their shows, buying their records, their t-shirts, their CDs, their DVDs, they start to lose track of who they are and who got them there. Mr. B isn't like that. He isn't like that. Right. You know, and, and what I try and do is, you know what? We've had a number of listeners actually, we've had a number of listeners actually um, message him saying, Hey, I heard your music on spaced out radio. I absolutely, uh, I absolutely, Love the fact that we are that you know we're we're getting involved with you and they love their music and so on and so forth and he'll actually respond back. Not many musicians, Ian, would take the time to do that. Absolutely not. You know, you know, the hardest thing to do, the hardest thing, is to get all that money and because when you, you know when you're hungry, you have that fire and then you get. You get a little success if you get money, and all of a sudden you're in a bubble. You know, you got bodyguards, people don't come near me, you got to keep them away because they're crazies out there, and and you get detached from everyone. The hardest thing is to stay grounded. 
Yeah. Okay, I just Did got a me- to you? I just got a message from Bumblefoot. And uh, he says he's in his bunk checking emails. He's got to stay quiet. Everyone is sleeping. So I'm going to say, oh, you're on the tour bus. Shh, keep quiet. No worries, my friend. So we're not going to get a Bumblefoot tonight. They're on their tour. You can't blame them for that. You can't blame them. No. We can still have a legendary show. Yeah. But either, true. either way, it's kind of cool that he took the time to respond. Exactly. You know that, but that's so a, doing, that's the dude he is. Cheers to Bumblefoot. Cheers. No, Bumblefoot. You, you need to invite him to round table. You know what? I might I might bring him on. He wants to come on in a couple weeks. Uh, I got to figure out a place where I can bring him on because I don't know. We'll figure it out one way or another. I will make room for him if he wants to come on. I will make room. Oh, yes. If Mr. B wants to come on, we'll make time. <laughs> you know. Is that from Wayne's World? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It will be mine. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. It will be mine. <laughs> yeah. One of these days, once we blow up, once this show blows up, you know what I'm going to do? I and, and I, I probably shouldn't let this secret out. Well, it's not really a secret. It's more of a pipe dream right now. But once this show blows up and we take this into a different stratosphere and I'm able to get some funding coming in, what I'm going to do is I'm actually I'm actually going to f- phone them up and I'm going to say, I want to buy one of your guitars. And then what I'm going to do, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that guitar autographed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bunch of our Space Out Radio listener names in the hat. And I'm going to make a draw for that guitar. That's what I'm going to do. See, I didn't there expect you that. You know what I expected? I thought you were going to put it on the wall, backlight it, and then get on your knees and go, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> oh, hell, hell, buddy. Why do you, why do you think I'm going to... Why do you think... No, no, hold on. I, I'm, I'm way ahead of you. I am way ahead of you because... I'm gonna get two of them. I'm I'm gonna get two of them. <laughs> I think I'm gonna buy two guitars <laughs> off of him. I'm gonna buy two guitars I off of him. You know, when you turn fifty, when you turn fifty, we gotta have a concert, Guns and Roses, with all the listeners. Oh, we gotta think be, bigger. Wouldn't that be great? Actually, in Vegas, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, Axl Rose probably wouldn't show up. Oh, stop it! He hasn't missed a show in years. Has it missed the show in Maybe years? The whistle. I, I'd like the whistle. No, you know, you know what I am going to do though. If our Paracon takes off the way I hope it does, and we and, and we're able to make it big, either year two or three, yeah. if if we if we're able to bank some money uh, from the Paracon, what I want to do is, as we grow and as we get bigger is I actually want to bring him out for a concert. There you go. See, there. Yeah. yeah. You know, honestly, and I and, and I kind of put that by him, and he's like, "Sure, man." If he goes, if it opens up my schedule, I'd love to. I mean, hell, right. you know, I would totally do that. I'd fly him out here. Absolutely, I'd fly him out here to, to play a solo show. Why not? Do you imagine how how much that would rock? Mm-hmm. That would be awesome. Literally. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. <laughs> And you got to realize, like he could stand on, like he could set up on this at the resort where we're having the event. If we continue to use that resort, okay, after this one, he can literally stand on this hill, and everybody can stand on the ski mountain below. And you know, it, it's not that high up, so everybody would still be able to get a view, but we wouldn't have to build a stage. He could just set up right on top of the hill, and we could actually rock it right on the middle, like right in nature. It's just incredible. We could do that. We have the power. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's my goal. That's my goal. It will be mine. For sure. It will be mine. For sure. It'll happen. <laughs> oh, yes. It will be mine. So if we have if we have BumbleCon in two years, we'll make sure Ooh. it happens. 
I like that, BumbleCon. Absolutely. I should be a record promoter. I should be a record Genius. Promoter. You know, I'm looking at the chat rooms, and there's still a lot of people here. Of still, course. Still a lot still of people. You're a popular guy. guy. You know, you know what? You just reminded me, I have a great Dan Aykroyd story. Please, fill us in. <laughs> so, um, I'm at the Scream Awards, and I'm there to give... Uh, with the concert band, Lauren, we're presenting Mickey Rourke with the best villain for um, for uh, 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 Iron Man 2. And afterwards, we go backstage. And this was the night that Bill Murray was there in, in full um, Ghostbusters uniform with the pack and the whole thing, you know, announcing that he's doing Ghostbusters 3. So we go backstage and there's Sir Anthony Hopkins and, and, and Bill Murray and, you know, we're all hanging out. So first one I make a beeline right to is Bill Murray. I mean, it's like, you know, I love Bill Murray. So I, I said, I can't wait to see Ghostbusters 3. I said, what took so long? And he says, well, he goes, Dan Aykroyd can't write for shit. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's the worst writer. That is awesome. <laughs> He goes, he goes, don't you know? Dan didn't write. I look at everything Dan wrote after Ghostbusters. Suck. They all bombed. They suck. He can't get a script for the life of us. He's been trying for, for 10 years to write a damn script. He can't get a script. You know who wrote the first one, don't you? John Belushi. And I'm like, wait, wait. <clears throat> John Belushi wrote Ghostbusters? And he's like, yeah. Dan Aykroyd gave the script, and, and he made all the notes on it. Then he freaking died, and I got the part. <laughs> I'm, I don't, he was supposed to play Venkman. So John Belushi wrote Ghostbusters. Dan got the credit for it, but living it off John Belushi's ghost for <laughs> 30 years. I did not know that. <laughs> no way. That's Jeez. kind of yeah. a sad story. John Belushi you know was great <laughs> What I thought was awesome was the new remake of Ghostbusters when they when they all came in and made their appearance. Mm-hmm. All the all the cameos that they did, yeah. Hold on, guys. I, I just got to call time out here for a quick second because Bob, we need a stonometer update. <laughs> Have we a lost? stonometer update? What, the official what? stone, <laughs> the official stoned out. Based out radio stonometer. I'm, uh, let's see here, 14.8. If your car <laughs> could travel at the speed of light, would your headlights work? Hmm? Only if it's going 88 miles per hour. Oh! <laughs> wait, wait! 88 miles per hour? <laughs> wait, wait. The rest of that night? You gotta hit the 88 miles per hour. You always got to hit the 88 miles an hour. No, I, that <laughs> night was also the same night at the Scream Awards that um, Michael J. Fox and uh, the guy who plays the doctor, I can't, Christopher Lloyd, were yeah, there to celebrate the anniversary of, of Back to the Future, and they had the DeLorean. And there's an after mm-hmm. party, right? And we go to the after party. So it's, it's Mickey Costas. And me and um, Kieran Elliott, who's the spokesman for McKellen Scotch. And uh, the DeLorean pulls up, and Mickey says, I got a ride in that DeLorean. So we go up to the guy, and who's standing next to him? Joe, if you remember, Joey Buttafuoco. So we're both from Long Island. <laughs> so and we start talking, and, and you know... He, he knows my dad because my dad used to take our old GTO. Our, we had a Judge GTO that I learned to drive it. And he used to always get fixed at Butterfuco's place in Baldwin. So uh, we start reminiscing. And big, meanwhile, Mickey's talking to the guy that's guarding the DeLorean. And then Mickey says, come on, get in. He's letting us bar- drive the DeLorean. So I get, I, it, Mickey gets in the driver's seat. I get, I'm sitting on Costas Bedlore's lap. And we take off on Sunset Boulevard. Mickey floors the thing, he sets the date back to 1984, and he says, says, when I tell you, hit the flux capacitor. So we get up to 88 miles per hour. (laughs) 
feet down Sunset Boulevard, and I hit the flush capacitor, and there's all these lights come on, and they go, right, and all these noises, and lights, and then, like, nothing happens, and we're like, that's it? <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, we turn around and we go back to the club and he flaws it again at 88 miles per hour and he goes, hit the flux capacitor! <laughs> we hit it again and the lights go off. <laughs> Nothing happens. We get back to the no. club, we get out of the car and we go, this time machine sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the time machine... <laughs> Over Back to the Future, eh? Bob, we we, <laughs> we defi- Bob, we definitely have to add something Back to the Future to the stonometer. I'm thinking 17.5 that we got to hit 88 miles an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens? <laughs> and then we adventure into the. Funny. And then we enter into the green unknown. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there are some conspiracies surrounding the whole the whole uh back to the future movies. It's kind of weird. Yeah. What are the conspiracies? I never heard this. Oh, there's a bunch. Well, like the Twin Pines, you know, they um gets knocked down and it gets changed in the when he goes back in time then he, he, he returns mm. to the current time. It's not it's not Twin Pines, it's a it's a single pine, so you know, like the twin towers get knocked down, and then the, the uh, universal one world center or whatever it's called is put in its place. It's things like that. Wow! No, I, I mean, I, I, I haven't heard any of those. I mean, it's like the last big conspiracy I heard was the uh, ghost behind the curtain in Three Men and a Baby. I didn't hear that one. That's just There's a cutout one? of... Uh, it's, a, it's a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson, but for yeah. like years, until Ted Danson has admitted it, for years everyone thought that was a, a shadow person behind the uh, curtain that was caught on camera. And it was all over the place. Mm-hmm. Does that stonometer go up at all if I tell you that I'm playing a new drinking game that Ian taught me during the last break? No. <laughs> what, 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 what is this game? What is this game? Fear Hunter. I'm not. I think you're supposed to play it with somebody else. Basically, I just set out six beers and drank five of them very fast. <laughs> That's a complex game. Wait, I, I, you, do have, you, you remember the scene in, in, in Fear Hunter ow, where they play a Russian roulette? So we used to play this game called Beer Hunter. We put six beers, six cans of beer on the on the table in front of two people. They'd turn their back, and a guy would shake up one can, and they mix them all up. Then we'd take the can, each can, and open it under our noses. And the one that exploded, when you open it from shaking it up, that person has to drink all the open beers. <laughs> no, 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 what I'm doing wrong. I need another been... person. So, so it's beer <laughs> roulette. Yeah, it's, it's it's beer Russian roulette. Yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. there's a way to stop that though. You know, if you uh, have a can that's shaken up, there's a video I saw on YouTube where a guy can sets the can down and he taps it a certain way, and every time it works, it stops the you know whatever process that's been started when you shake the can. All right, Catherine has a question for us. What? <laughs> Why do paranormal investigators wear so much black? Because they wear too much cool. <laughs> because they, they always wear black on TV shows. So they look green in the in the uh, night vision. <laughs> <laughs> green, it would be green and white, right? Green and white. Black turns up as white. That's like that's like you know. In the old black and white movies, Frankenstein, the makeup that Boris Karloff wore, wore is actually bright green. But when you shoot it in black and white, it looks pale white. So, uh-huh. you know, so the color pictures back, uh, you know, um, of of that they sh- they did take some color pictures back then, 
And Boris Karloff's face is bright green. He looks like the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Darren. Darren Williams. The, uh, uh, the picture of um, the Monsters set was striped pink, apparently. Yeah. But for that same reason. And and here I thought they only wore black because they wanted to be like the Amish paranormal team. <laughs> <laughs> but on the okay. serious yeah. side of that, yeah. black does dispel negativity. True. True. Beyond the Omniverse. Beyond the Omniverse, who has been a new listener here over the last couple of weeks, and we thank you for that, buddy. <laughs> Uh, he's saying, have any of us ever dealt with Sasquatch? Well, Catherine James was dealing with, messing with Sasquatch today with Jack Link's beef jerky on Twitter. <laughs> honestly, honestly, she, she was. And the worst part about it is, she, you know, the dangers of having a social media person are the fact that you give somebody control of your, of your, of your Twitter handle, right? Which I have done with Catherine. And I could honestly say, you know, that was a brilliant idea, Kitty Cat. A b- brilliant idea to hit up Jack Link's jerky today. It was. So she's now efforting to try and get sponsorship from them. So they want to be they nice. want to be cooked. But yes, I have seen two Sasquatch. I've heard one roar. I've had, uh, I got, uh, last year we were able to find two tracks about eight miles from my house. So on and so forth. So get this. Speaking of Twitter, I got a the laugh here. The only counter I had was my Bigfoot six million dollar man doll. Well, of course you did. You, you live in skyscraper <laughs> land. You live in skyscraper yeah. land. You know. Did anybody see the picture that I posted last night of Carl? Mm-hmm. Yes. I didn't. I'm sorry. I was working. Okay. I, posted, I don't think I did. Okay. Please tell. It's hard. It's hard. I posted it on Facebook as well. Okay. I, I was able to finally find an alien picture that looked like Carl. <laughs> okay. So when Carl when Carl appeared at my window on April twentieth, April uh, April twentieth, twenty fifteen. I've been searching very, very long to try and find a picture of Carl, and I finally found one that looks, I would say, about 90% like him. And I posted it on Twitter. And I actually built a little meme that says, Happy Birthday, Dave. See you soon, Carl. Right? Right. So, it just tripped me out. Here's another funny thing from Twitter that... um, Yes, Catherine, I did see the banner that you made for overtime with Carl's picture on there. This is why I love you, dear. You're, you're always thinking one step ahead, and I appreciate that. But I, I got this ad on, you know, you get people adding you on Twitter and Facebook and all this stuff all the time. I got added by the Lipo Queen. <laughs> okay? So she said what? the Lipo Queen. So this is, you know... This is a woman I don't know, okay? I don't know anything, okay? I just figured, what the hell? So I added her back. You know, she added me first, I added her back. And she says, thank you for connecting. Please call my Beverly Hills office at 310-275-3990 to set up a consult or visit my website. And here I'm thinking, here I'm thinking... Really, you, you you haven't even seen me, and already you're assuming I'm fat. <laughs> like, first off, I can't afford anything in Beverly Hills. I, 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 I think I'm too poor to even walk on the sidewalks there. You know, but I, I, I was almost I was almost uh, hurt by this. You know, hurt by this. Oh, come on. No, I'm sensitive. 
you know. Well, either, you see, now you that was paranoid conspiracy theories click in. Did, was this a random, you know, just follow? Or was she sent to you by someone you know who thinks you're fat? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? You bring up. You, you know what, though, Ian? You bring up a good point. Has anybody on the panel ever had this happen? Where, like, let's say tonight we're talking about, I don't know, pick a subject, reach toothbrushes or something along those lines, Uniball 207 pens, whatever it is. And the next day on social media, an ad comes up for that exact oh. same thing. It's so weird, <laughs> yeah. I, I am... I, I know. Th- that, the other month, okay, the other month, I must have had that happen like six, seven times where I'd be thinking of something the night before, thinking, like not even talking about it, just thinking about it. And then the next day, the advertisement is right there on my Facebook page. (laughs) Trips me out every time. Every time that happens. Because they're listening. Could they? Yeah, you search on that. It's like every something to that. Oh, yeah. Because I went to this website, um, and they, you know, when those like those half like porn video games come up with the the, the animated like girls in the tiny bikinis, or you know, tied to the post with the with the barbarian, you know, right? <laughs> I'm like, what is? No, this? We don't know what you're right. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I'm like, you want to play? I'm like, all right, sure, I'll play. I click the button, right? It goes to the thing. You got to fill everything out. I go, forget about it. The next day I get up, I have like, like in my inbox, it's like sex toys, porn sites, dating sites. I'm like, what the hell did I hit? <laughs> what did so I get I go, myself I go, into? What did I get into? So I, I go right to my uh, Mac keeper and I do a virus scan. And I got like like ten malwares just from clicking that button, but that it, it, it sent every porn and, and 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 sex toy and sex clothes stuff. And my whole inbox was filled. They're watching. Yeah, you, can't, you can't click on that. <laughs> sure, blame it on malware. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. you clicked on it. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I well, I was like, I, I was like, is this game I, real? I, I, I don't I know, it, man. I've never clicked on it. There, there is something to that. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if the phone is always my cell phone is always listening, or anybody's cell phone is always listening. But that is, re- it, I don't know. There, I would like to know what that's about because everybody I know who talk who I talk to about that has it happen. You know, and I, I just don't think it's coincidence. Right. Beyond no, the, in all seriousness, go ahead. in all seriousness, I I agree with you. My wife and I have had conversations about things that we don't normally talk about, or or ideas that we have, and then over the next couple of days, our Facebook feeds and news feeds and emails, we're all of a sudden getting things kind of geared towards what we had talked about, even though maybe we hadn't even searched anything on the internet. I know. I don't know. It it r- really makes me wonder if our phones are, you know, that conspiracy is true that our phones are really listening in on us or maybe maybe listening for trigger words that that sets up or, some or sort of advertisement. If you're not near your phone, your smart TV supposedly. Yeah. Yeah, the program is called Carnivore by the CIA. Well, yeah, I mean, I happened, it, it, supposedly the, the, the NSA listens for a special word to hunt right. terrorists. But I think they collect a lot more data and then sell it to companies and use that money for, for dark, you know, for black ops that they can't put in the budget. It would be a smart move. <laughs> Going down the conspiracy the way, theory train, that's a good move. Absolutely. By the way, there's a speaking of, of, of black sites. Have you guys ever visited the Black Vault? Oh yeah, yeah. I love the Black Vault. Okay, it has a great website. I mean, they, is they that the have, CIA? 
No, they no. Black, it, 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 the, go ahead. They, yeah, Black Vault's run by an individual that uh, does freedom, uh, freedom of Information Act requests and then posts uh, all, all the classified documents that he, that he acquires all on one database. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's like the WikiLeaks of the Black Ops. Yeah. Right, and, and, you know, and it's, we talk about how you get ridiculed when you come out and say something about the paranormal. Well, you can go on that site and actually see um, they have a special section where the CIA is investigating paranormal stuff, like using ghosts as a weapon to weaponize paranormal activity for 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 warfare and all of a sudden they did all this research remote viewing and all this stuff you know psychic abilities and 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 all this stuff cryptozoology animals and all this stuff is right there now it, that just says to me if the government is spending millions or billions of dollars doing these experiments over 20 years they're not like oh we did one experiment just to see these are experiments that went on for like 20 years and it's all listed right there how can anyone say that ridicule us for discussing the same thing? Your tax dollars went to fund the research into it. Right. Well, exactly. if they're ridiculing you, you know that the, why are they uh, taking the time to criticize you in the first place is because you have hit a sore spot or, you know, a point of interest with them. I don't know. I'll have to check that out, the Black Vault. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, the, it, 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 you know they don't always just have the paranormal stuff of the UFOs. I mean, they also have some amazing stuff like the original D-Day plans, the secret plans for D-Day that were Eisenhower's plans with his notes in the margins. And you see the actual, you know, the, the most top secret thing that probably is, you know, all the the Manhattan Project documents and the secret, you know, mm -hmm. plans of them putting together the bomb. Truman. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah MK I mean, Ultra, MJ 12. MK Ultra, you're right. Yes. And it's all are they all blacked out? No, no. These are, these oh. are you know, most of the old ones aren't blacked out at all. Like, you have the reports where they first discover that the guys that are, like, there to watch the uh, atomic bomb may have been exposed to radiation and, uh, and, and will will probably get cancer and die. Like, they didn't know about radiation. They discovered it from the people that were at witness to the atomic b a bomb. The early uh, experiments started dying. I mean, you know, yeah. there's, even this, there's even this story where, you know, um, when um, they filmed El... Uh, um, uh, what was it? It was uh, Genghis Khan, right? The John <laughs> Wayne movie. They filmed it on, on on an atomic test site, and it was everyone in that movie from John Wayne on down all died of cancer. Yeah, I heard about that. Hey, I want to get so to, I want to get to a question here. This one comes from Beyond the Omniverse. Do each of you have an external, extraterrestrial, interdimensional influence? Describe, please. Who wants to take that one before I get into my multiverse story? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I'm not sure I do. A thousand questions. <laughs> Bob, how's the ayahuasca up there in Edmonton? How is what? How's the ayahuasca up there in Edmonton? Ayahuasca? No, I don't think I've ever heard of it being available around here. Uh, if it was there, you would, wouldn't you? I don't know. Um, they they say that you know to go through that. That's a, like a three day experience. And um, I know um, Mark Emery had an ayahuasca clinic, clinic open um, for several years in Vancouver, and he was able to have about a 50% uh, success rate, I think he said, with uh, the patients that he put through, that uh, they were able, it was able to, by using the ayahuasca, to uh, reduce or totally eliminate their need for narcotic, narcotics. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, it's an ayahuasca experience is something that um, is very, you know, uh, inward looking. And uh, I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> I, I, I'm too chicken. 
I'm going to admit that. Uh, okay, my my UFO alien experience. Uh, I'm going to say it was around March 15th, March 20th, 2014. I w- went to bed like I would normally after having a couple years' worth of experiences, trying to figure everything out. I was going to bed pretty late at night, usually around 2, 3 in the morning. And I remember when I fell asleep. Yeah, Bumblefoot, rocket, man. Just, there you go. Nice. Hold on. Doing the barroom version of Sweet Child of Mine there. Beautiful. <laughs> anyways. A- anyways. I went to bed that night, and this is what I call my second awakening, where I I remember all of a sudden, and, and I'm someone who doesn't remember my dreams, and I remember being in this dream state where all of a sudden I'm standing in this bright white room, and I knew there was walls around, but I couldn't see them through the bright white light. And I'm looking around, trying to figure everything out, and I hear this voice, and it says, Dave... We no longer want you to research any of these topics. We do not want you to read any books, watch any TV shows, go online, watch any, you know, read up on any statistics. We don't want you joining any paranormal groups, any forums on topics, nothing. However, we give you permission to watch YouTube videos. And I remember saying... That's uh, pretty much paraphrasing here now, but that sounds ridiculous. Why would you take everything away from me that I'm trying to learn as to what's going on, yet you'll watch YouTube videos? And the last thing the word, the voice said to me was, "It's it, the answer is simple. You will be able to tell what is real and what is fake. Well, two weeks later, two, three weeks later, I had my close encounter of the third kind where I was called outside at my friend's house. And and they had 10 acres in their backyard. And that's when I saw the ship on the ground about 150, 100, 150 yards away from me. Probably closer to 150. And from there, five days after that is when I walked uh, or came face to face with my first extraterrestrial with Samantha Mowat on April 15th, 2014. So that is something that was very, very intriguing to me, and that's my experience. Anybody else? Well, I have a question. Do you yeah. think doing the show, and if they're monitoring our airwaves yeah. and our internet and everything else, do you think doing the show made you a target, or that, or or would was there some other reason? Like, you know, why did what what, what drew them to? <clears throat> No, I wasn't. I, I, I wasn't doing the show then. I had no idea that the show was even going to happen. It wasn't even a thought. And and believe it or not, Ian, at that time I didn't even know what internet radio was. Never heard it. Question for you, Dave. Yeah. Doing the program is it cathartic for you? Sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, I mean. Let me put it this way, Bob. There are times when. I am tired. Okay? I mean, putting in... Like, I'll be honest with you. Over time, I'm going to be beat to hell tomorrow. <laughs> uh, my, my alarm will go off at 6.55 a.m. I'll be out of my house by quarter to eight to get to work for about 8, 8.05 because my staff that works under me, i got to have a meeting with them tomorrow morning at 8.15. And, you know, that's tough. You know what else is tough is is when you get a guest on there and you got and and you feel a lot of hype going on around them and just nothing seems to be working that is tough um yeah. you know and we've had some good guests we've had some bad guests and we've had everything in between and we've had some where you know what I will just absolutely ban them from ever coming on the show again there and as I've made mention before, there I've also got a banned list of of certain people that I just will not invite on this program. You know, it's not that I'm being a dick about it, but it's it's more the fact that you know they they just do nothing for me. Or when we had them on the air, they were you could tell that they were so full of crap. And even though I try and believe everybody and I try to hold the target, 
you know, yeah. you, just, you just can't have certain people back on. But on the flip side, I'll give I'll, Bob to answer your question. I'll give you another example. The last five days have been a a living hell for me. The last four days since Saturday, been a living hell for me. And and when I said earlier on in the program, in hour number one, like literally, I hadn't eaten in four days because of my depression and anxiety. You know, you guys don't see that. And when I say you guys, I mean the audience. You don't see that. You know what I'm saying? And I sit there and I say, and I say, uh, you know, you hear the show. You don't hear what goes on beforehand. You don't hear what goes on after. You hear the show. And sometimes, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to come out and say what I do as an act but I remember my former sports broadcasting boss, a guy named Gary Rabel. Just, I hate the man. I, to this day, I hate the man. But the one thing that he said to me that stuck with me through my entire broadcasting career, it was, when my, it was shortly after my wife and I separated, my first wife and I separated, and I sounded in the doldrums on the air. And he called me up and he says, Dave, you sound like shit tonight. And I said, well, I got a lot going on. You know, I I apologize. I'm giving my best. He goes, no, it's not good enough. And I got kind of got my back up. Right. And he goes, I want you to listen to me for a second. He goes, you have 400,000 people listening to you right now in the greater Vancouver area. He goes, they don't care. If your dog died, your wife left you, your kids hate you, they don't care. What they care about is getting the best from you. So every time that microphone light goes red, that day is the best day of your life. And make it sound that way. And that's what it was. And that's the way it has to be. It's still hard to do, though. It is. But but you have to separate it. You said doing but, the show you know, up. I mean, from the time I was a little kid, from the time I did my first, you know, local community theater plays, it didn't matter if you had the flu, you had the chicken pox, it didn't matter. The show must go on. Exactly. You know, I mean, you know, Freddie Mercury wrote a whole song about it. He was dying of AIDS, and he wrote a song called The Show Must Go On, because he, he had to go out there every night, like it was, like, you know, it was his... You know, it was any other show. You know, that's part of being a performer. If you, it's like, it's like you can't don't do the crime if you can't do the time. You got to be able to swallow everything and perform. And in a way, you know, that's your refuge. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter what's going on in your life, you know, if you shut it, you 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 will. You know, some people will drink, some people will start coke, some people will shoot heroin or take a pill, but. Never had that problem because I could always perform, and it blocks everything out. You know, they, they talk about, you know, like when you perform, when you live your life, you live your life in three walls, right? But when you're on, when you're actually performing, whether it be on radio, stage, on camera, whatever, it you have to build the fourth wall and close yourself in and live just in that space of the show. Everything else exists outside those four walls. Mm-hmm. I would fully agree. How a little Bumblefoot on Pink Panther theme song here? <laughs> I heard that last week. You know what? This this was the song I wanted to be the lead song into Spaced Out Radio, but Warner Brothers hmm. actually owns the rights to the Pink Panther theme, so I couldn't use it. And that's when Bumblefoot said, "Hey, I need you to listen to Women Rule the World." Or little brother is watching, and he goes, "I really think women rule the world would be great because it's got like this sort of Star Trek sound at the be- uh, at the end of it or at the beginning of it." And I kind of looked, at, I went and listened to it on YouTube, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's the song. That's our new theme." <laughs> and so that's what we built the theme under. Kind of cool. Great. Kind of cool. You, you know what, Dave? Yeah. It's great that you can share your personal, you know, struggles with, with everybody, though. Not every 
radio host does that. And I think that's what makes you special. Thanks, I mean, buddy. art kind of did a little bit, too. But, uh, I mean, that's what everyone gets to know you that way. Well, and it, I don't know. You know what? I, if you don't mind, I actually have an answer to that. Okay, and Ian, I'm going to drag you in here with that one again because you kind of okay. know what I, you kind of know what I'm going through when you say this. When you're a journalist like I am, and and trust me, I've dealt with millionaires, I've dealt with billionaires, and I'm not saying that to brag, okay? But when you deal with people like athletes or musicians like Ian has, and you deal with that ego on the daily basis, and then you know. Never mind the ego of the athletes or the or the stars, okay? But then you deal with the attitude of the media. And trust me, people in the media, especially television people and commentary scribes in your newspaper, okay, they have the biggest chip on their shoulder. Even though they're only making about forty-eight grand a year, they got the biggest chip on their shoulder because their you know their company pays for them to go get the three thousand dollars suits and and so on and so forth. Where in radio, you they give you a budget for nothing. You know, and what happens here is you deal with so many different people and egos and attitudes that you just get tired of it. And in the end, it's it's not about Darren playing a game. Like if you listen to a lot no. of online radio, okay, and you know, especially paranormal radio, which is our genre, there are so many people trying to be who they aren't. Right? Yeah. And that comes out in a couple of ways. Because what happens is, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my own radio show. So then they come out, yeah, what's going on? Para pups. <laughs> you know, and they start doing all this this garbage that they have learned from listening to the you know, Howard Stearns or the Alex Joneses or or Tom Lycus or somebody along those lines. Tom Lycus I love though. You know, but the whole point is, is that they they've been trying their their damnedest to try and borrow someone's shtick in order to to make their own identity, and it doesn't work. And it's because they haven't gone to broadcasting school, they haven't taken any real radio training. So what happens is they don't know what they're doing, even though they think they do, and. Part of gaining that audience is being natural with them, right? Which yeah. is which is why I mean, there's a lot of things I don't share. I I I don't mention my kids' names on the air. Okay, well, I don't blame you there. Only recently have I mentioned my wife's name on the air. You guys all knew her as Mrs. S O R. You didn't know who mm-hmm. Jol. You didn't know who Jolene was, right? So, you know, it's only been recently where I felt comfortable enough to mention the town I live in. And I only did that because, well, you're all going to find out because I have a Paracon going on up here. Right? Right. (laughs) So, eventually, it's all going to happen. But you have to keep that privacy. But there are certain things, like my depression and anxiety, why do I got to keep that a secret? Why do people right. have why do people have to make that a secret? I have a mental illness. It is called depression, it's called anxiety. And if somebody hears me, okay, I'll give you an example. I have one listener, totally different topic. I have one listener out there, okay, who has been attacked for 2 years by extraterrestrials once to twice a week. Eric Cooper knows who I'm talking about. Okay? Yep. And he was he was almost suicidal because this was happening to him. And this is a guy who works in a maximum security prison as a guard. Okay, he's a tough dude. He's a he's got to be mentally tough on the ball. And here he is having the most nightmarish experiences once to twice a week being taken. And it's haunting him and he was suicidal. Okay? Said a prayer asking for help and then somehow after that prayer and and you know what god is my witness this is the truth and this is straight out of his mouth the prayer was answered he found our show when we were about 35 40 listeners a night he found our show and we just happened to be talking about alien contact that night 
and we've been able, and this show has been able to counsel him. He listens every night. I know he's listening right now because he messaged he me. Just, he messaged me just a couple of seconds ago on on Facebook. Okay, so the whole point is, we all need to heal, and but if we don't talk about it, nothing ever gets solved. And and with my depression and anxiety, if I can help one person by saying, "Hey." You're not alone. Does anybody, everybody, is anybody here a wrestling fan? You know, I know there's a few on well, Twitter. I have been. Okay. So, uh, w, uh, uh, WWE had a guy on SmackDown named Moro Ronaldo. Okay, as their announcer. Uh, he does a lot of uh, Showtime boxing and, and uh, as the main announcer, and he does a lot of pride fighting uh, commentary as well. Anyways, Moro is a good guy. And he's been a good friend of mine since he was about 17, 18 years old. Or when I was about 17, 18 years old, because he's a couple years older than me. And he's, he is a manic depressant. Manic. Like, he in the past, he was suicidal, and he was able to find the right medication and the right treatment and help to, to get some help. And he is very vocal about his disease. Okay? His, his mental status. Right? And if we don't talk about it... And, you know, as this, as this, uh, Moro and I, by the way, grew up in the same town together. And, but if we're not talking about this, we're not getting anywhere. And if it helps one person, because I don't consider myself, Everett, Everett made a very sharp comment the other day. Okay. He made I a, did? Yeah, you did. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> actually, actually. <laughs> Actually, you made a step down. Actually, it was earlier today. It was earlier today. He made the comment that that basically stated, you know, that there's a lot of people out there who think I'm famous. And I don't see that. And the comment Everett made was, you know what? We're right near the top. And I never thought about it that way. That this show is right near the top of where we want to be. And mm-hmm. and I can say this. It shocked me. But the, and there's a lot of people who think this this Dave Scott dude is 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 a famous guy when really I'm not. I'm just I'm just a guy who knows how to speak in front of a microphone and yibber yabber. For four yeah, plus. but you, you put yourself out there, and, and that's unusual. Well, well I think it's the nature of the show. You have people coming on and talking about <coughs> subject matter that they wouldn't talk about in front of everyone. Some mm-hmm. people will, right. but a lot of like, like for me, I won't. You know, if I if I'm on. If I'm on a you know uh, uh, entertainment talk show, I'm not going to be talking about the subject matters. And they do ask me because they know what I you know the kind of movies I make and the stories I write. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that when, when you come here and someone's open, not just about their paranormal experiences, but their, their life, you kind of make a safe place, and everyone on the on the on Facebook and everyone all are willing to listen and. I'm ready to jump down your throat and laugh at you. Well, you know, and, so all and, sharing yourself makes that possible. And you bring up a good point there because I have had people in my chat room or even message me privately. Oh, come on, you're not allowed allowing us to have any fun in the chat room. I said, hey, I'm allowed to allow you to have any fun you want. Just don't be a prick to other listeners. Okay. Oh, this, the chat room's so wonderful. Yeah this this is, nicest- this, this is this is a this uh, is a is uh, a. The way I look at our chat rooms, and Twitter's a little bit of a different beast, but on our chat rooms, you know, you could call me, you know, a dictator or whatever you want, but I want our chat rooms. And as we grow bigger, their chat rooms will establish themselves and other people will take off with their own chat rooms, and that's fine and dandy. But it, the ones that are within my view, okay, that I have control of, with whether it's Spreaker, whether it's uh, the SOR Space Travelers Club, whether it is on um, our website, okay, I have full control of that. And if somebody is being a dick, A, you're going to hear about it from me. 
because I'm going to pull out all my guns. Everett doesn't like it when I pull out my guns because he thinks it looks unprofessional. I don't think so. Well, I think it was the time I, I called. I don't think so either. I think you're you're protecting the the your pants. I think it was the time yeah, I, I, I was. I, I, I think this show needs a troll because it's too easy a target. Mm-hmm. It, it's got to the point now. If a troll comes in there, the, the troll just gets blasted out of there too, which is great. Absolutely, you know, and you know, it's one of those things where you know I run a tight ship because I want everybody. Even though everybody has a differing opinion, I want them to finally yeah. have a place where, you know what, you may believe in God, you may not believe in God, you may believe in a higher source, you may believe that unicorns are real. But it doesn't mean that any of you are wrong. Or that you shouldn't or that you shouldn't feel that respect you know you are wanted. Exactly. There's respect. And that's yeah. what it's all about. That's what yep. it's all about. Gentlemen, I got about mm-hmm. three minutes before I got to shut this thing down, man. Some of us got okay. to birthday, buddy. I can't I, believe, yeah, I can't believe it's four. I came on, I came on to like, to like a, say hello, and it's four hours later. And Dude. it's two o'clock. <laughs> that's that's, that's well, what I, we I, do I, here. I say happy that, birthday, and I'm still on here. That's what we do here, though. <laughs> You know, I could go all night. I really could. But the problem is, Ryan on WQEE would probably knock me off the air when he gets on it about, well, geez, two hours from now. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm sure Joe at, you, at the United Public Radio Network has a morning show about to come on in New Orleans as well. Gentlemen, I want to mm-hmm. say thank you to all of you calling on in and being a part of this. And I also want to say thank you to everybody on Twitter at hashtag Space Out Radio in the chat rooms. I apologize, Spreaker was being a little stupid earlier. It seemed to figure itself out. Hopefully tomorrow night we'll have a clean show. But it was a lot of fun. I want to thank everybody who called tonight. Nick, the champ, I'm calling you out, man. We gotta get you a we gotta get someone to give you a title shot. You deserve that. We got to come up with a brand new finishing move as well. Tomorrow night on the show <laughs> at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time, we got John Tenney coming on. Hour number three, it's going to be me and someone else. I don't know who it is, but we're going to make it happen. Tenney for the first two hours, spaceoutradio.com. I want to remind you that you can go to our website, spaceoutradio.com. Click on any features. I want you to check out the 2017 Caribou Paracon. Check out the information right there. See who's coming. The tentative guest list is set. It's a good list, people. we got some great speakers. You want to get up here September 29th to October 1st. Check out the Spaced Out Radio Show store. we got t-shirts, stickers, posters, Carl the Alien ca- uh, candles that you can light up. And watch Carl melt right in front of you. That's always wicked as well. The, the, other, the other thing that I want to remind you is because of you guys sharing this show and making life very special for me every single night, I have fun doing this. And it's all because of you. Do me a favor. Continue to share the show. Post it on your social media pages. Post it on Twitter. Use the hashtag Space Out Radio. If you're in McDonald's lineup or at the bar, tell people about it. Because together, we will own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, take us home. See you tomorrow.